Good morning! So, kamusta po ang lahat? And, uh, nakapag-almusal po ba kayo? Kamusta ang inyong gising? And, uh, we hope na ngayong umaga ay, uh, naka-ready na po kayo, nakapag-almusal, and at the same time, uh, na-prepare na yung inyong mga laptop or mobile phone and ang inyong uh, application na pinapa-download po namin kahapon. But before that, before we begin our uh, training, and again, kamusta po kayo? And uh, uh, sana po ay marami pa ko yung natutunan sa amin kahapon. And uh, we hope na this, uh, today's webinar, ay mas marami pa kayong matututunan. So with that, let's have our opening prayer for uh, para mas maging uh, ma-bless po tayong lahat to be led by one of our educational technology specialists from uh, SDO Makati, Ma'am Ruena Reyes. Okay. Good morning, dear teachers. Hope you are uh, doing great. But before that, let's pray. Feel the presence of the Lord. Father God, oh, we thank you for every participant that has been filled here today. For each mind and heart that fills the presence of this webinar, we thank you. Only you truly know what we are uh, setting out to accomplish today. We have an idea, a vision, hints, and daily instruction. We have talents, abilities, and time to work. However, only you can see in perfect details the end of every beginning, every perfect project, every season, every life, nothing is ever in vain, for even mistake and misstep are used for good. Your righteousness transcends all our efforts and understanding. Forgive us for our pride, the pride that pops up and the pride that threatens to unqualify us. Threaten our confidence in who you have made us to be. Set our free from comparison in order to work together efficient, efficiently. Bless this morning today, all those here, as well as the life of those we will encounter afterward. Ready to make us every moment count. And this is what we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mommy Wang, for uh, leading us into your prayer. So, You're welcome. Uh, God again, bless. Good morning. Good morning, Mommy Wang. Kamusta ka? Mabuti naman. Yes. Mabuti naman. Kamusta ang weather dyan sa Makati? Okay naman ang weather sa Makati. Walang ulan. Fresh na fresh. Kasi maaga pa. All right. Ayan. Ayaw mo magpakita. <laughs> Ayaw ko kasi maga yung mata ko. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, I'm supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be uh, also one of my uh, co-hosts pala is Mama, Mama Marie, pero siguro na, kasi ang usapan namin nakabarong or Philippine yana siya, baka nagbibis pa, Mama uh, Weng. Oo, intayin niyo siya kasi baka pinipin niyo pa yung mga susuod din niya, basabog. You know naman, dear participants, every webinar namin, we want us to be a jolly, exciting, motivated. Kaya lagi kami may mga, alam nyo na, lagi kami may mga sorpresa. Katulad ng mga malalaman nyo today, na ito pong mga ito ay inyong magagamit. At at the end of the day, you will engage this topic. Ayan, di ba yes. sir? Yes, tama, Mami Wing. And to give us uh, a welcoming remark, let us all welcome our Director 4 for the ICTS, uh, Director Abraham YC Abanil. Good morning po, Director. Hello, good morning, Mark. Good morning, Weng. Good morning, Derek. And uh, good morning din sa ating mga uh, teachers, ating mga school heads who are attending this webinar. I believe meron ding mga parents and I presume baka meron ding mga bata, no? mga, even mga learners na nag-attend nitong uh, ating uh, webinar today. Good morning sa inyong uh, lahat and welcome to this uh, training on Microsoft uh, Office 365. Uh, good morning din kay Isang uh, from Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has been a strategic partner in the of the department in providing uh, education uh, uh, in this uh, country. No, We are actually one of their biggest con uh, customers. I think nasa top five tayo worldwide uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, uh, size ng contracts uh, with Microsoft. No? Um, and Microsoft has been uh, quite a big help actually to uh, the department, uh, not just in providing yung software nila for O365. Uh, if a lot of you are familiar with the learner, learner uh, information system, uh, in the past, madalas uh, magkakaroon ng error, di ba? Yung perpetual, ano ba yun? Yung um, eternal, eternal forbidden error. Uh, Na-solve yan uh, lately, uh, noong 2018, uh, primarily because nilipat natin yung uh, LIS uh, servers ng Microsoft using the Azure Cloud uh, technologies. And if you have access to DepEd Commons, uh, you'll notice uh, since uh, uh, yung first week na nagkaroon ng errors, after that, wala ng errors, it's actually because we have put it in also in uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud. And it has been uh, quite a uh, big help in terms of providing the capacity to make sure na yung systems natin are able to handle yung uh, volume of transactions that are uh, we, we require dito sa department. No? Doon sa DepEd Commons, na, ngayon nasa 8 million uh, users na hanggang ngayon hindi pa yan nagbabag down uh, despite the huge number of uh, users. Uh, we have, uh, we're also using Microsoft Teams actually sa kadamihan ng mga meetings dito sa department. No? Uh, unfortunately, hanggang 250 lang yung maximum users nila sa Microsoft Teams and actually in major other uh, video conferencing tools. Kaya hindi natin magamit for uh, this kind of trainings where we have, uh, what, 15, 17,000 participants and even reaching mga 40,000 uh, participants. Uh, with regards dito sa Microsoft, nasanay tayo uh, with uh, Microsoft, teaching Microsoft as a subject. Uh, under the elementary level, uh, tinuturo natin ang productivity tools in grades 4 to 6 using uh, primarily yung Microsoft na uh, tools. No? Uh, for this particular webinar, we will be focusing on OneNote and uh, Flipgrid. It's not so much uh, to deliver yung digital literacy component ng ating curriculum, but really as a tool uh, for you uh, in, terms, uh, in terms of uh, using these tools uh, in your classrooms. Like most of the like the webinars that we have been conducting in the past few days, uh, this particular uh, webinar is focused on providing you with uh, tools that will help you be more creative and be more flexible uh, in terms of handling your classes, which uh, you will definitely need in this uh, very difficult situations that we are coming up, uh, coming into uh, when school uh, opens. No. So we hope that you will uh, learn this, uh, you, will, you will be able to use these new tools in your respective classes and uh, adjust to the situation as uh, necessary. We also hope that you will communicate sa ating mga parents and ating mga learners na natatakot dito sa uh, COVID virus. Uh, it's uh, very serious and we definitely understand uh, why they are uh, worried uh, about the safety of their children. We are also worried no? and we are making uh, preparations to make the schools uh, safe uh, for, uh, for uh, our learners and uh, these tools are actually one of the strategies that we are provide, providing to make sure that our learners are safe but we hope that you can communicate to them that uh, the department, uh, the public schools, also ang ating mga kasamaan sa uh, private schools, we are here to make sure that uh, there are ways that we can provide a safe education para sa ating mga bata. Hindi kailangan tumigil yung pag-aaral ng ating bata. Meron tayong mga paraan para magawang uh, safe yung uh, pag-aaral ng ating mga bata. Isa na ito ang uh, ICT assisted teaching. Marami pa tayong ibang uh, methods like yung TV based and mga radio based and yung mga modular activities that uh, the department will be releasing para pwede makapag-aral yung bata sa bahay. Uh, uh, habang uh, hindi po, habang napa-quarantine ang or habang hindi pa safe yung schools uh, ituloy natin yung pag-aaral wag natin itigil uh, very important too kasi ito yung uh, kinabukasan ng ating mga bata good morning again sa inyong lahat and i hope that you will be able to learn uh, a lot of tools uh, this morning Thank you very much, Director Abraham Waisi Abanil, for uh, 
Uh, very inspiring and uh, your welcoming remarks po para sa ating mga uh, webinar participants. And maraming maraming salamat po. And maraming salamat we're hearing Mark. from our director na mention niya na hindi natin iwanan. Siyempre mga kasama natin na private schools. No? And at the same time, yes sir? Director, salamat po. Ayan. And at the same time, ang priority ng ating department ay ang kanilang safety, ang safety ng ating mga learners. Mami Weng? Yes. Oo, totoo yan. Safety ng ating mga learner para kahit na uh, si Mami Weng ay nandiyan sila. pa. Yes, nandito ako. Yes. Oo, yan. Right. Siguro sa akin yung lag. <laughs> Oo, siguro sa iyo ang lag. Ako nandito ako. Oo, yan. All right, sige pa. Lipat ako ng ibang wifi. Dalawa wifi. Oh, yan, naglalag ka, boss. Ayan, so habang iniintay natin ang ating co-host at lumilipat ng wifi, ganun talaga mga participants. Nangyayari yan kapag naglalag ang wifi, still a uh, few minutes lang but mag-o-okay na po siya. Ayan, so excited na po ba kayo today to learn a lot regarding the topic that we're going to discuss. We have mga uh, a good speaker here today, mga certified sa kan sila sa kanilang skills na i-discuss nila today. Di ba, Sir Mark? Yes, Mami Weng. But before that, meron tayong special na bisita, isa sa mga boss ng Microsoft Philippines. Wow! Ang um, education programs <laughs> lead, lead ng uh, Microsoft Philippines. Uh, let us all welcome a virtual applause and clap to Ma'am Clarissa Segismundo for his inspirational message. Good morning, boss. Hey, good morning. Hi, Mark. Hi, Ma'am Wang. Hi, Ma'am. Good morning. Ang hey. ganda ni Miss Isa Hi. ngayon, ha? Nag-ready kayo. Hindi nakapaghanda yan. Hindi nakapaghanda. <laughs> Nag-iinig siya ko para sa webinar natin today. So, wow. ito na ito, hindi na susuot. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. Uh, first, maraming maraming salamat, Sir Mark, Ma'am Weng, Ms. Rosemary Abeja, if you're there, uh, for having me. Um, I'd like to uh, greet also our ambassadors who will support you in today's session, uh, Ms. Rubilin Pastrano and Sir Michael Morelia. Who else? Did I miss? Or do we have more ambassadors who are conducting today's session? Dalawa lang, ma'am. Okay, so hi, Sir Mike, and hi, Miss Rubilin. And of course, to all the teachers who are making time to learn something new today, mabuhay kayo. You know, this uh, global pandemic has enabled a lot of green buttons in the education industry. And, uh, you know, so much so that everyone was kind of forced to adapt quickly to the new changes and embrace the new normal. So parang ang nangyari, you know, parang everyone suddenly had to learn things online, communicate online, collaborate online. And teachers are lucky because you have all these tools that are available for you. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, all the more during this time, teachers are all the more needed by the students because like what Director Abram Abanil said earlier, no, just because may pandemic tayo doesn't mean kailangan huminto yung pag-aaral ng mga bata. Um, I feel that the teachers should be fully equipped with the right tools, with the right technologies, and they should be equipped in learning how to properly use those tools so that they are very deliberate in the skills that they want their students to learn online. When we do all these online classes, virtual teaching and learning, we also have to be conscious that it's quality over quantity. Um, we spend, we don't waste time. We spend online uh, by making sure that we are right. Like what I said, we are deliberate in what we want the kids to learn. Um, we have prepared the lessons well. Uh, we are utilizing and maximizing the available tools so that we can do more and engage better with our students. Um, at the same time, when we teach our students, you know, when we shape their skills to prepare for the future world of work, and at this point, 
we're really uncertain what's gonna what will the future be like uh, but when we say you know we want these 21st century skills to be imparted to our students right the five c's communication collaboration computational thinking um um what else there are five c's computational thinking collaboration communication sir mark you have to help me here i missed the last two creativity and critical thinking and critical thinking thank you for this guys thinking of analytical thinking creativity and critical thinking um aside from preparing them for the workforce we should also be preparing them to be uh better leaders and more educated voters i think that for one is one of our responsibilities as stewards in the classrooms on a day-to-day -day basis um for teachers uh you know we'd like to commend you know for for continuously taking charge of your own development so and puna microsoft we are very overwhelmed with the amount of requests that we've been receiving webinars on uh, webinars around virtual teaching webinars around you know microsoft teams office 365 how to how to uh, conduct lessons offline using OneNote, you know, those things. Flipgrid, um, learn, using the learning tools. Marami po kami nakukuwang requests from individuals, from associations, from groups, even from private company. Now is the best time really to embrace technology uh, because everyone is really just using technology to get things done, uh, to learn, to, to reach out to others. Um, and you have all these, you know, DepEd has access to Office 365 and Teams. All the teachers have access to these licenses. So please, please leverage those things that are available for you. Eventually, the students will have access to them as well. And so when we do these online learning activities uh, and virtual and, and implement the virtual classroom setup, it, it's good to know that you have that leverage already. Meron na pong access yung teachers at studyante. Um, the investments that you are making in um, learning all these things will not go to waste. The competencies that you're building, the skills that you're learning, whether it's functional skills or technical skills or essential skills, just keep doing them because maybe six months from now, a year from now, when you look back, you'll be amazed at the amount of um, skills that you've acquired and how much you've progressed as a teacher. So maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-invest ninyo dito sa mga skills ninyo at sa hindi nyo pagsawang uh, pag-attend sa mga trainings, right? And everyone's really just hungry to learn, including myself, including people in Microsoft. Uh, you know, in, in, in the available time that we have after we've done our work and our meetings, we also have to continuously learn these things and learn our own technologies as well um another one last thing that um i'd like to impart with everyone or for the, to the teachers to everyone in the call um is a principle that um, i've always lived by and i'd like to share this with you, you know um it's a saying that i learned uh from one of the groups which goes we keep what we have only by giving it away. Um, as educators, you know, as stewards of, 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 of our students and, and the youth, um, it's really tiring, you know, the day-to-day the -day activities that you have to do and attending to our personal lives as well. It's tiring. You can rest. No one's stopping us from resting, but don't give up and don't stop. It's not smooth, but it's doable. So whatever we're doing right now, it's it's not magic. It's a process. And by continuously looking out for one another, by checking in on your fellow teachers, checking in on your students, um, making sure that whatever we are learning, whatever we know, are being shared with everyone so that we have a better curriculum, we have co-teachers who also know how to use all these tools so that they can do more, continue to do that. Just continue to pay forward, continue to, to share what you've learned. Um, with that, you know, I hope 
I hope that in the next few months and weeks until the classes start, I wish that you will continue to pick up all these things, experiment, stay curious, and stay informed and stay educated. So maraming maraming salamat. Good luck in today's session. And I hope to see you again soon. Ayan. Thank you, Miss Isang, Ma'am Clarissa Says Mundo from Microsoft Philippines for that very inspiring and motivating words. Mami Weng, anong na, napulot mo doon kay Ma'am? Grabe, ang dami, no? Oo, sobrang dami. Nakalimutan ka. Hindi, joke lang. Uh, nakakatuwa <laughs> naman yung encouragement ni eh, Ma'am Isa kasi today, uh, maraming ginagawa ang DepEd for our dear teachers na uh, isa ang Microsoft na makakatulong sa atin at uh, lahat ng ito ay ginagawa para sa pandemic na ito magamit at lalo pang ma-enhance, ma-capacitate ang skills ni teachers toward sa mga platforms na maaaring gamitin sa pagtuturo. Yan, yung creativity, the skills, yan. Ayan po. Ayan. So, so again, uh, again, thank you very much, Mang Teresa Sales Mundo. Maraming salamat po sa tama sa amin. Right one, clap. Yay. Big right clap. Yes. Thank you so much. So ngayon, natawagin na natin ang ating co-host, si Miss Marie. Let's welcome Miss Marie for this morning. So Miss Marie, ayan, go ahead. Good morning po sa inyo. Ayan si Doktor. Morning po. Good morning, Doktor. Apo, good morning po sa inyo. Anong malabo? Hindi po ako masyado naririnig. Medyo... Medyo malabo, ma'am, yung Ay, screen. Baka po kay yung area. Kay ma'am Rowena. Maliwa ma sa side mo, ma'am, Weng. Malabo. Medyo malabo, ma'am, Marie. Baka po medyo madilim lang yung area ng lugar ko. Mukhang sa camera, ma'am. Medyo madilim po siguro yung lugar, okay. ligula, lugar ko. <laughs> anyway, so... Opo, sa anyway. camera po siguro. Bago tayo mag-start, uh, balikan lang natin yung kanina sabi ni ma'am... Uh, isang, no, Ma'am Ma Clarissa, sobrang uh, na-recognize din niya yung mga efforts ng mga educators natin sa pag-attend ng mga webinars, sa pag-upgrade uh, ng kanilang uh, uh, professional development through webinars like this. And uh, sabi niya nga, hindi ganun kadali itong pinagdadaanan natin, pero doable. Tama, Mami Weng? Yes, very doable at makakatulong talaga sa atin. Yes, Ma Marie. Yes, opo. Um, very inspiring po yung sinabi ni Mang Isang kanina at talaga namang na nareminis ko before nung I become a Maya uh, three years ago. So talagang nakaka-inspired na malaki na po yung difference ng noon at ngayon. Nasa new normal na nga po tayo. At kung titingnan natin, mas challenging po ngayon. Pero ang teacher, ang mga educator, both private and public, ay talaga namang mas na-excite pa po. Although hirap, pero sabi nga po, pag gusto, maraming paraan, pag ayaw, maraming dahilan. Yun ang nagagawa nating lahat sa bawat isa. Yun po. Tama po ba, Sir Maj? Uh, yes, Ma'am Marie. By the way, sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ano po ba, Ma'am Marie, ang MEA? MEA means Microsoft Education Ambassador. Okay po. Na, may mga training po yung ginagawa eh. Uh, before ka maging MEA, nag undergo ka muna ng um, parang orientation nila. Then sa orientation na yun, for example, kami sa batch namin, 1,000 kaming in-interview. And then ang pinalad lang po na makapa, makasama ay nasa ano lang kami, parang nasa 100 or 50 lang kami. So ang konti, di ba po, bago kami nag-undergo ng 3 days na training and then saka kami nag-adapt ng mga schools po para po maging ganap na maya bago kami graduate. Uh, it takes time, parang a year yata bago kami nakagraduate ng maya and then after nun, doon na po nagsunod-sunod na Ini-invite na po kaming lahat for the training all over the Philippines. Ayan po. Yun. Ganun po yung proseso ng pagiging maya. <laughs> Dadaan oh. talaga sa butas ng karayom. Kaya kapag sinabing maya po, eh talaga namang uh, na, na, nasala at na-train ng maayos ng mga taga-Microsoft. Katulad po nila Ma'am Isang, nila Ma'am Grace, nila Sir Jomer, nila siyempre... Si Sir Magno, yan lagi, yan nandiyan dyan, at sa kanila Sir Yufer. Yan po ang mga nasa um, 
posisyon noon nung kami tinuturuan pa at tinitrain pa. Di ba, Sir Madge? Yes, Yan thank po. you, Ma'am Marie, for explaining about how is uh, Maya working, paano maging Maya, and ano yung maging, naging journey mo as a Microsoft Education Ambassador. So very quick lang, ano? pero uh, yes, exciting talaga ang pagiging Maya. So we, have, we hope na ma-encourage namin kayo na explore pa ang mga Microsoft na applications and kamitin yung mga uh, advantages at mga features na makakatulong sa ating pagtuturo. Alright, Tama so po. I think ready na ang ating speaker for this morning. Ipapakilala ko na ang ating topic for today ay about uh, your voice daw, student's voice. Wow, And, uh, very yes, nice. Yes, application na explore natin today is about Flipgrid. Alright, wow. so... Nagamit mo na ba, Ma'am Marie, ang Flipgrid? Yes po. Actually, exciting po yun. Very, very yes. nice. Lalo na po sa mga bata. Nagamit ko rin po noon sa classroom. Kaya medyo nakakatawang i-share talaga ito. At I'm sure magugustuhan ng ating mga kaguruan. Kasi, di ba po, ang DepEd nag-invest sa atin ng 365 account individually. So, dapat magamit po ito. Tama po Ay, ba, yes, sir? Ma'am. Yes, Ma'am Marie. Alright, sige, pakilala na natin ang ating uh, resource speaker, ang ating guest speaker for our uh, webinar for this morning. So I'm honored to welcome and uh, uh, present our speaker. He is a master teacher one at Pinagbuhatan High School, SDO Pasig City, and uh, hold, currently holding his Master's of Arts in Education, Administration, and Supervision from Uloyo among Rodriguez Institute of Science and Technology. He is a Microsoft Innovative Educator Master Trainer, a Minecraft Education Edition Global Mentor, a Microsoft Certified Educator. Grabe, isang kapatid ko to. Sobrang dami ng kanyang mga naging achievements and uh, is a uh, well-known din na uh, resource speaker na na-invite sa iba-ibang division. Pero it pinaka naging highlight at natutuwa ako sa mga naging achievements niya ay nung nakapunta siya ng Australia to represent the Philippines to the Minecraft Global Mentor Meetup and Education in Games Summit. Again, let us all welcome Mr. Microsoft, ah, Mr. Microsoft, Mr. Michael Microsoft. D. Morelia. Mr. Microsoft. Yay! <laughs> Hello! Good morning, Hello, kapatid. Oo oh, nga, Microsoft na sinabi. Good morning, Good morning Michael. Hi, Cops. Hi, hello po. Namuksa po. Malinaw po, ba ang, uh, malinaw po ba ang aking audio? Malinaw naman, sir. And kanina, may yes, nagka-technical problem talaga tayo. No? Nararanasan talaga yeah. tayo. Tayo mismo na-experience yan. Pero sabi nga, hindi madali. Pero doable at nagawa ng paraan ni Sir Michael. I think, nasan ka ngayon, Sir Michael? Actually, kanina, sir, nasa computer laboratory ako. And then, a minute before we start, biglang naglokoy yes. ang internet. So, what I did, naghanap ako ng classroom or ng office. And then, yun, luckily, malinaw pala. Uh, malakas yung internet connection dito sa BEIS. So, nag-crash niyo muna ako dito sa BEIS. Para, wow. yan. And then, nag-set up ng panibago ng ating voice pod. Ayan. Thank you so much, Sir Michael. And uh, nice. excited na kaming marinig ang Flipgrid. Sige po, take it away, Sir Michael. Go ahead, okay, Sir Pops. So, <laughs> okay, once again, good morning, everyone. I'm Mr. Michael Morelia from the Division Passage City. So, since marami na tayong natutunan ng mga technologies na pwede natin magamit, and we are now uh, approaching to the new normal, so ano yung pwede pa natin gamitin? So, hindi natin alam kung magbubukas na ba ang klase at makakabalik na ba ang mga estudyante natin sa, sa August 24. So, kung ganun, ano yung mga pwede pa nating apps na pwede natin gamitin? So, isa sa mga pinakamagandang apps na pwede natin gamitin is what we call the flip read. So, basically, I'm teaching uh, social studies. At usually, ang social studies is twice a week or sometimes sa amin is four times a week. And then, 50 minutes lang siya or sometimes one hour per day. So, kung makita natin, napaka-limited lang na oras na inilalaan ng bawat teacher sa kanyang mga klase. So, hindi natin nakukuha yung, yung, yung mga insights or yung mga opinions or yung mga gustong sabihin ng mga bata kasi nga, napaka-limited lang ng oras na inilalaan natin sa bawat klase. Second, marami sa mga sudyante natin na during the class discussion, mga nagigiyasin lang magsalita. 
So maaaring personality lang nila na nahihiya sila or na-intimidate sila sa mga classmates nila. Kaya hindi natin nakukuha yung kanilang mga insights, yung kanilang mga voices o yung mga opinions doon sa certain topics na tinatalakay natin. And good thing, meron tayong isang platform na it's a learning community wherein we can harness yung student voice ng mga bata. So dito na de-develop natin yung communication skills ng mga bata na kahit na wala siya sa loob ng classroom, they can still participate as long as they have an internet connections and devices, either smartphone or laptop or desktop, pwede silang makapasok doon sa learning community na create para sa kanila. And that is Flipgrid. So, hold on, I'll be sharing you my slide. Ayan, habang nagpe-prepare si Sir Michael ng kanyang uh, uh, presentation, uh, Flipgrid is an app na uh, the good uh, online and it's good for sharing their uh, voice, their exp their reflections, their uh, ideas wherein kasi mga bata ngayon, di ba, mahilig mag-TikTok, mag mag video na recording so why not use that uh, application that yung enthusiasm nila that excitement nila na pag video using this application called Flipgrid Sir Michael ready na ang yung screen Ayan so again wait natin so again Flipgrid is free wala po siyang bayad and uh, ang nakakatawa dito, it's a good thing for collaboration din. Kasi pwede silang mag-post uh, mag ng kanilang uh, video and then their fellow or their classmates or mga ano, educators then can also share or can even uh, post their own comments and videos then dun sa na-post na, na recording. Alright, Sir Michael? Nice screen na ba, sir? Hindi pa. Sige, sir. Ayan. Ito na yung screen mo ngayon. Ayan. You're showing the website, Sir Michael. Yes, sir. So, I'm using Ayan, right. a... Okay, right. so... Take it away, sir. Okay, so I'm using now muna yung aking uh, PowerPoint presentation. And then later on, we will go on a workshop basis. Ayan. So, so basically, paano natin ma-access itong Flipgrid? So, basically, ang sabi nga sa tagline ni Flipgrid is, it's empower every voice. So, meaning to say each one of our students are given a chance na makapag-voice out ng kanilang mga insights, ng kanilang mga voices, or ng kanilang mga opinions using this platform. Okay, so sabay-sabay tayo. So to start with, so just log in. Just key in the flipgrid.com. Ayan, so makikita natin dito. Yung ating website is flipgrid.com. So, ito yung pinaka-interface after natin makapasok. This would be the interface of the Flipgrid. So, sabi nga dito, this is empower every voice. So, may kita natin dito, if we're first time tayong mag- uh, first time tayong mag-log in dito. So, kung ikaw ay educator, you can easily sign up using this uh, using this uh, platform and it's 100% free. So, libreng libre siya. This is one of the DepEd Commons na pwedeng magamit ng mga educator. And for students naman, hindi na kailangan na mag-log in ng mga student as long as na meron silang mga codes na ibibigay ng kanilang mga teachers. Yeah. Also, yeah, Flipgrid is, is a social learning for, pwede siyang magamit for kindergarten after the PhD. So, yung mga mga nagtitake ng kanilang mga masters and doctorals, pwede lang magamit pa rin ito. And of course, hindi lang ito sa education, pwede rin ito magamit sa mga trainees or if you have your student government or organizations, you can use this to, guard, to harness a student's voice or empower yung every voices. Ayan. So nabanggit na natin kanina, each educator pwede silang mag-create ng kanilang account using this platform. The learners can share the ideas, stories, and work as long as meron silang access dun sa ibibigay na 
green Sni pictures. It also has a coolest storytelling camera wherein built in na siya dun sa device. So if you're using a, uh, devices like smartphone, may magaganda siyang features na pwede natin magamit, pwede tayong maglagay. Habang tayo ay nag-video, pwede tayong maglagay ng ating mga ng emojis, pwede tayong maglagay ng mga text. We can also blur it ourselves. Kung medyo nangihiya tayo, camera shy tayo, uh, pwede natin i-blur yung sarili natin kung hindi tayong mahalaga naman is yung, yung, yung opinions natin o yung stories natin or yung voice natin na mati-share. So, kung medyo nangihiya tayo, pwede natin i-blur. So, mamaya, ititignan natin kung paano gagawin siya. Also, in this platform, we can also invite our families. So, we can invite our friends. So, for example, you are doing uh, para to sa mga students mo and then gusto mong may makapasok na isang parents para makita niya yung outputs o yung insight or pwedeng magkapagbigay ng insight yung mga guests natin. So we can uh, invite guests or our family members doon sa discussion natin. And also, because we're now talking about the artificial intelligence, so meron na rin siyang tinatawag, nakabuild in na rin dito yung tinatawag natin. We can share magic on Flipgrid using the QR code. So pwedeng code or pwedeng scan lang natin. So each video na makikreate natin, each grid or each topic na makikreate natin dito sa platform na ito, we can easily generate uh, QR codes na pwedeng screen lang ng mga, ng mga students natin or ng mga participants natin at easy makakapasok na sila o makapagbibigay na sila ng response dito sa certain topic na pinag-uusapan natin. And sa mga first timer na gagamit nito, maganda din siya kasi Marami tayong pwedeng gamitin ng mga ready-made ng mga ready-made na mga topics kung medyo na, na, nahihirapan kang mag-start ano bang magandang topic na pwedeng kong gawin. So while waiting, we still have two more months to wait bago magbukas yung klase natin. So ano yung mga pwedeng nating gawin topic? So merong mga readily available na mga topics just for you. And of course, of course, we are building a community of educators. So hindi lang siya available sa Pilipinas, available siya worldwide. So meaning to say, millions of educators around the world. So may kita niyo siya yung mga yung mga green na green mga plus signs na yan. Meaning to say, ito yung mga areas sa daigdig na may mga educators na gumagamit. So pwede tayong makipag-collaborate. Pwede tayong makapasok doon sa mga classrooms ng iba't ibang mga educators around the world using this platform. Yeah, that's the power of, that's the insight of what we call Deep Leap Green. Now, ngayon, magsa-sign up na tayo. So please get ready on your, please get ready on your devices. So you can use your smartphone or you may use your desktop or laptop in creating an account using this platform. Okay, ready na ba tayong lahat? Okay, so again, this is in, kailangan natin ng internet connections para makapag-access tayo dito sa ating free grades. Okay, so first things first. Yeah, so if you are an educator, of course, you have to sign up first. So kung wala ka pang account dito, you have to click this, the educator sign up. Again, it's free. Now, if you are a student, if you are a student, a participant, of a certain training, you can use this naman, you enter a click code. So since gagawa tayo ng ating first account dito sa Cliply, so please click Educator Sign Up. Now, so after that, hihingan tayo, may mga options, ano yung mga pwede natin gamitin na option sa pagkikreate ng account. So number one, we can use Google account or we can use our Microsoft account first. Google accounts. So, kung meron na tayo mga existing Google account, for example, yung ating debit account, so we can use our debit account. If you now have your Microsoft account, yung Office 365 account nyo, meron na siya, available na siya, you can also use that in creating the account. For example, in this activity, I'm going to use my official Microsoft Office 365 debit account. Again, kung wala pa kayong Microsoft debit account, so you can use your existing Google or Gmail account. Or kung wala pa, kung hindi na na-access yung mga bag, yung mga account na yon, so you may create your Microsoft Live account for free. So pwede rin siyang gamitin. So next, after key in your uh, account, you may now enter your password. 
And then since I'm using my my Office 365 account in this in this activity, so hihingan ako ng permission na yung mga information ko doon sa account na yon ay pinapayagan ko si 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 Flipgrid na ma-access yung mga basic information. And then, so please complete yung mga information na kailangan. So for example, your first name, your last name, your country origin. So mahalaga yung country origin especially kung makikipag-collaborate tayo sa ibang bansa. So madali nilang makikita kung ano yung time zone natin. And of course, yung inyong grade level or age. So may mga options dito like for K to 12, ages 3 to 4, for elementary, middle school. So I'm teaching social studies, grade 10, contemporary issues. So I take high school, ages 14 to 18. And then don't forget your birthday. Ayan, alam nyo na yung birthday ko. I'm celebrating my birthday on October 23. So never mind kung kailan ako pinanganak. Now, so after creating your accounts, just click Let's go. Nakakasunod po ba tayo? Okay, so after after creating our account, so magpa-pop up na yung welcome notes ni Flipgrid. So sabi dito, welcome to Flipgrid. You may now getting started creating your first grid. Yeah, just click start my grid. Now, in creating a grid, so what is a grid? So basically, grid is a learning community. Grid is a learning community wherein yung mga students natin, yung mga participants natin, yung mga friends natin can collaborate and share their insights and voices doon sa community. So you have to name first your flip grid. So again, kung sa loob to ng klase gagamitin, so you may create your grid name like, for example, if you are handling five sections, so you can create or name your sections. Uh, you can create grid first section. So if you're handling five sections, so makakapag-create na halat kayo ng five flip grids. Or pwede naman first subject. Or if you are working in the division office or meron kayong specific program. So for example, you're handling a uh, club or organization. So you may create, uh, you may name your grid using those programs. Or, pwede rin naman if you're handling a training like this, so you may name it based on the title of the training you're handling. Now, so for this activity, so ang ilagay kong name is Classes sa Contemporary. Since I'm teaching contemporary issues, as well as we are now in the new normal. So we are facing these contemporaries. So after creating the name of your grid, we have three types of read. So number one is what we call the school email. Second is student ID. And third is educator learning community. In this page, makikita rin natin na ready na agad once nagkapag create na tayo ng account at nag-open tayo ng ating first flip grid, makita natin na ready na kagad yung ating flip board at readily, pwede na natin siyang i-share sa ating mga Either pwede natin siyang i-share sa, sa, sa website natin o kung meron tayo mga group chat, we can share this. And then, so pipili tayo ng isa-isa. So let's start with school. So halimbawa, ang type ng grid na gagawin mo is for school email. So ano yung itsura ng school email na yan? So basically, pag school email yung tinik natin, yung grid na gagawin natin ay ma-access lang within the organization. So for example, if it is a training for teachers, if it's a training for teachers, ang ilalagay ko dito is yung deped.gov.ph. Since lahat naman ng mga lahat naman ng teachers all over the Philippines ay may ganung domain. So kapag same yung domain, makakapasok sila doon sa grid na gagawin ko. So doon naman sa mga may hawak na ng Office 365, for example, Pasig City is part of what we call the uh, NCR2, yung tenant ng Pasig ay bahagi siya ng NCR2. So kung hindi ma-access ni teacher yung kanyang debit account, so pwede niyang gamitin yung kanyang existing Microsoft Live account o oh, Microsoft Office account na galing sa DepEd. Kung gusto kong isama yung ibang regions o yung ibang uh, tenants 
or ibang division. For example, yung ibang part ng NCR na bahagi ng NCR1, so ilalagay ko din yung domain na ito. Ngayon, kung for school purposes naman ito, kung sa mga estudyante natin, tandaan natin, minsan, magkakaiba yung mga domain ng teachers, iba yung domain ng administrator, and then iba din yung domain ng mga estudyante. So, so dito sa using school email type of grid, so make sure na nakalagay dyan lahat yung mga domain na sa tingin niyo meron yung mga estudyante natin o yung mga participants natin. So after that, just click next. Yeah. Pag nagpag-click na tayo ng next, again, you are now ready to launch your grid. So, may kita natin dito sa slide na to na yung ating code, yung ating click grid, ay pwede natin ma-connect doon sa Remind. We can easily connect and share yung ating click grid doon sa ating Google Classroom. And of course, we can also connect our flip grid na ginawa sa ating Teams. And of course, just copy the link and then you can share it via your social media account. Now, balik tayo ulit doon. What if ang gagamitin ko naman, wala pa kami sa halimbawa sa DepEd, wala pa naman tayong school account for our students, di ba? And some of the divisions ay wala pa rin namang mga Office 365 for now. Pero gusto ko nang gamitin ito sa mga estudyante ko. So we can use in classroom base. So we can use this type of grid. So that is the student ID. So ano yung itsura ng student ID? Ano yung mga informations na kailangan? So basically, yung student ID, ine-enroll natin isa-isa yung mga student natin doon sa grid na gagawin natin. So meaning to say, meaning to say, uh, yung mga bata na naka-enroll doon, sila lang yung makakapasok doon sa grid na gagawin natin. Again, this is good kasi of course, we are protecting our student in terms of the data privacy. Most of them are minor. So, sabi ang suggested dito, if we're going to use our grid for classroom base, so we can use the student ID type of grid. And then, just click next. Yan. So, paano ngayon tayo i-enroll? Paano natin i-enroll yung mga estudyante natin? So, pwede natin i-enroll yung estudyante natin mano-mano by manual. So, we can add our students. So, kung 50 students yan, so you have to type one by one yung names. So, hihingan ka rito ng information like yung first name, yung last name, and of course, yung student ID. Itong student ID, nasa sa akin na yan kung anong format or anong style yung gusto natin. Pwede nating alphanumerical ID na specific lang doon sa students natin. Or, we can use yung LRN para makabisado ng mga bata yung kanilang mga learners uh, number, reference number. So yung LRN ng mga bata, pwede natin siyang gamitin as student ID since kabisado naman nila yon. So medyo taskful siya kasi mano-mano for, for example, if you have 50 student and then you have to type in one by one yung 50 students na yun. Ngayon, meron naman mas madaling paraan din. Yung tinatawag natin, we can create our student list using the CS, CSB template. So may kita natin dito sa pinaka-offer left portion ng box is yung template ng CSB. So you have to click that. Ayan, balik muna tayo dun sa manual. So after natin makapag-create ng, ng, ng name, ng last name, and then ng student ID ng bata, just click add. And then click next. Now, may kita natin na yung name ng bata papasok na dun sa upper portion na box. Ayan. So kung nagkamali tayo or may maipasok tayong pangalan ng bata na hindi dapat nakasali dun sa grid na yun, just click remove and then add. So for example, this one, na enter ko na si Juan de la Cruz with his ID identification number. Just click next. Yeah. Yeah. Ang maganda dito, since nakapasok na yung bata doon sa ginawa nating grid, mag-generate siya ng tinatawag natin student ID. So para yung bata, talagang hindi niya makakalimutan. So nandiyan na yung kanyang flip code. Kung medyo low-tech yung kanyang phone at wala siyang 
hindi kaya makapag-scan ng kanyang uh, ng A or uh, ng uh, QR. So, nandiyan yung clip code. And of course, nandiyan yung student ID. And of course, para mas mabilis, so meron siyang tinatawag natin QR code na pwede natin i-print, na pwede i-dikit sa assignment notebook or sa notebook ng bata para hindi niya na nakakalimutan na from time to time ihingi siya, Sir, ano po yung ating clip code? Pakisend naman po something like that. So dyan hindi na siya maliligaw kasi we can print that. Next. Ayun, kung ang gagamitin naman natin is yung mabilisan. Hindi na tayo magmamanual. Gusto natin kung meron na tayong Reddit template, we can copy and paste yung mga yung list ng student natin. Just click the template CSV. Yan. Pag click natin yung template CSV na yan. So we have to download. So nandito, pag after natin siyang ma-download, so may template na naka-excel siya. And then, nandun din yung instructions. So Simple lang naman yung instruction. So, once we open yung 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 template na nasa na nasa Excel, so yung wag natin tandaan natin, wag nating buburahin, wag nating i-delete yung pinaka first row. Yeah, wag natin siyang i-delete kasi pag na-delete natin siya, hindi mababasa, hindi ma-decode ni flip read yung yung list of students natin. So, dus mula do sa second row doon tayo mag start maglagay. Pwede natin i-copy-paste from our existing files. Yung yung name, last name, and then yung, yung LRN ng bata o yung student ID na gusto natin ilagay. So after that, save it. Save natin siya. And then, upload natin doon sa ating student ID. And then, may kita natin after natin ma-upload, yan, lalabas na yung pangalan ng isinulat natin. And then, just click next. Yun. So, yun yung, kaibahan ng, yun yung kaibahan ng school sa student ID. Okay. Punta naman tayo doon sa pangatlong uri ng grid, yung tinatawag nating educator learning community. So, ito, madalas ito ginagamit sa mga gantong klase ng training na hindi na natin kailangan ng student ID or hindi na natin kailangan maglagay pa ng ng, uh, ng ng email address. So, once na meron tayong QR code or once na meron tayong codes and we can easily access yung grid. So, just click that. Yan. So, ang options lang dito is that pwede tayong maglagay ng password. So, mag-generate siya ng password. Kaya lang, kung may halimbawa meron kang training, you have 100 uh, attendees. So, medyo taskful pa yung pagbibigay ng password. Anyway, Pag nakapasok naman na sila dun sa grid natin, we still have uh, we still have options pa rin naman para doon sa ma-filter pa rin natin lahat ng mga responses na ipapasok ng mga participants o ng mga students natin. And then, kung ito yung napili natin, so just click next. So sabi dito, anyone with the flip code can join and view videos on your grid. So pwede silang mag mag-view uh, mag ng mga link. Yeah. And then, after that, so kung nakapili ka na kung ano sa tingin mo mas babagay na gagawin mo dun sa grid mo, and then, you may now ready to share or launch your grid. Again, don't forget to copy. Kung ready na yung mga social sites natin, you can now copy or you may send again, you may send it by a Google Classroom, Remind, or you can send it via Teams. And so, once na-click natin yan, ito na yung ating magiging homepage. Yan. So, ready na tayo. Yung ating name is Classes sa Contemporaryo. And then, automatic, may naka-default na dyan na Say Hello on Flipgrid. So now I'll be sh shifting now dun sa workshop natin. So let's see, titignan ngayon natin ano ba yung itsura ng loob ng ating ginawang flip. Uh, by the way, since we are harnessing the videos of our student, syempre we're talking about data privacy. So kung ilo-launch natin itong flip read sa school natin, syempre marami magtatanong, uh, secured ba? 
yung mga students natin. Nagka-create, kumukuha tayo ng mga videos sa student natin. So, maraming tanong pagdating na sa security, sa data privacy. So, merong ready, available na form. May mga ready na available na parents consent na pwede nating ibigay sa mga parents natin. So, mamaya ipapakita natin. So, now I'll be sh shifting now to the workshop para makita natin live kung paano ba mag-edit, maglagay ng mga topics dun sa ating ginawa. Ayan, so habang may student check si Sir Michael, so in-introduce niya sa atin kung paano mag-create ng account as an educator. So if wala po kayong DepEd account, you can use your personal Gmail. So since we have also private schools na nakikinig, so you can use your personal uh, Gmail or other personal email account. So na-introduce natin ni Sir na pwede kang mag-manual ng uh, ad ng students. And nakakatuwa na meron palang parang ID at parang may QR code na, Sir Michael. Yes, sir. Meron na po. Yes. So, Ma'am Marie. Kamusta yes, ka dyan, Ma'am Marie? Yes, sir. Ayan. Yes, kapatid. Yung, on, yung kay Sir. Uh, I'm watching with kapatid Michael. So, yun. Maraming tanong, sir. Um, medyo ano, bagalan mo daw po unang koon. Okay, okay mabilis pa. Eh, kasi, okay, sige po. Bye -bye. Medyo excited <laughs> silang makahabol makahab okay, sa po. paggawa ng ating flip grid. And then, uh, suddenly, may mga internet interrupt, inter, uh, interruption daw po. Kaya medyo, ano, nag, parang nag-slow motion sila kapag sinusundan ka. So, Ayan. Actually, parang yung nararanasan ni Ma'am Marie ay nararanasan din ng iba nating educators and By the way, this webinar is recorded, so pwede nyo pong balikan. Pero alam natin yung mga teachers, gusto nila talaga on the spot at talagang makasabay sila sa ating speakers. So, Sir Michael, ready na? Take it away. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sir, nakikita na ba yung screen ko? Hindi pa. Ayan, Minecraft. Ayan. So, so ngayon, magla-live na tayo ngayon. So, hopefully, gumana ang ating magandang internet connections ngayon. So, again... If we're going to start again, yung ating uh, pag-create ng ating fifth grid. So just type fifthgrid.com. Oops. Ayan. So, ito yung pinaka-homepage natin kanina, di ba? So, again, kung bago tayo sa paggawa ng paggamit ng Flipgrid, again, you can uh, click this. Ayan. Again, you can use your Google account. So, if you have, again, your DefEd account or Gmail account, you can use that in signing up. Or if you have now your Office 365 account, You can also use that. Or if may kung meron na kayong mga Microsoft Live account, yung free account ni Microsoft, pwedeng-pwede nyo rin siyang gawin. So since I have account na, so ang gagawin ko ngayon ay magsa-sign in ngayon ako. Okay, so magla-login ako sa aking account. Yeah. 
So I'm going to use my Microsoft account. I'm using now my personal account. And then don't forget the password. And then click sign in. Ayan. So this is now my, my Flipgrid account. So meron ako dyan maraming existing na grid. So I started joining Flipgrid in uh, 2016. Pero nagamit ko talaga siya sa classroom ko. Fully utilized ko siya last school year lang. So yeah. So this is our account. Ayan. Iisa-isahin natin siya mamaya. So now, so we're going to create our first Flipgrid. Sabi ko kanina, ang title ng grid natin is Klase sa Kontemporaryo. So again, you may use different, you may name your grid according to the purpose ng paggawa nyo ng grid. So pwede name ng klase nyo. So if you have five sections or pwede yung, yung, yung subject or yung specific topic or module. Ayan. Pwede rin siyang module. Since we have four module sa isang taon, so pwede isang grade sa isang module. Or specific program, yung title ng program, or ng training. Ayan. So ang pangalan ng ating grade is klase sa kontemporaryo. So next, I'm going to choose now Educational Learning Community. So since wala pa naman tayong klase ngayon, so, ang gagawin ko lang ngayon muna is Educator Learning Community. So, i-click ko yung Educator Learning Community and then tandaan ito yung ating code and then just click next. So, hindi na ako ngayon. So, ang naka-default dito is pwede tayong maglagay ng password but for this time, hindi ako maglalagay ng password para Every one of you, so sa mga nakikinig at participants natin ngayon, mamaya, yeah, pwede nyong ma-access yung grid na gagawin natin. So just click next. Now, again, kagaya ng binanggit natin pa ulit-ulit, yung grid natin, pwede natin siyang i-share, just copy this, and then share it up in our social media account or messaging account, or we can directly integrate it or share it sa ating Microsoft Teams, sa ating Google Classroom, or sa ating Remind. And then, go to your grid. So, ito na ngayon yung ating grid. So, mapapansin natin, mapapansin natin dito sa grid natin, meron na siyang automatic na naka-default na topic. Yeah, so, Ang title ng grid natin is Klase sa Kontemporaryo and under of it is nandiyan naman yung ating first topic. So dito sa grid na ginawa natin, ang sabi, walang limit yung paglalagay ng ating topic. So as many as we want na pwede natin ilagay dito, walang limit yung paglalagay natin ng topic. As long as, ang best practice lang dito is make sure na yung mga topics na gagawin natin ay nakabatay pa rin doon sa pinaka-main idea or sa pinaka-domain natin, which is yung klase sa contemporary. Para yung mga bata hindi nalilito. So, yeah. so makita natin din dito, isa sa mga features dito sa ating grid, and we can add a co-pilot. So, ibig sabihin ng co-pilot, since we're talking about 50 students, or some of you are handling uh, some of you are handling 60 or 65 students, yun sa regular natin, or kung meron tayong mga trainings, 
Siguro meron tayong 100 to 300 o kung may mga breakout sessions. So, kailangan natin ng co-pilot or ng co-teacher na magmamanage doon sa ating grid. So, pwede tayong mag-create ng ating co-pilot. Just enter their email address. Ayan. So, kung, kung ang ginamit mo sa paggawa na ito ay ang inyong debit account, so may na para walang problema na yung email address niya is same tenants or same domain. Then, kapag nakapaglagay ka na, just click in file. Now, so pwede tayong mag-create. Ang tanong, ilang co-pilots yung pwede nating ilagay? So kung masyadong malaki yung ating attendees or masyadong malaki yung, yung bilang ng estudyante nating papasok dito sa ating grid, So, we can create as many as we want co-pilots. So, parang mas marami. So, kung halimbawa naman sa, sa klase natin siya gagamitin, so, pwede mong gawing co-pilot. Pwede mong gawing co-pilot yung iyong mga team leader ayan, or yung mga group leaders para madali nilang monitor kung nakapagpasa naman ng, ng response, nakapag-send naman ng response yung mga members nila. So, nasa atin yon. So, tanging, tanging si grid owner, again, si, yung tanging grid owner lamang yung makakapag-add or remove ng co-pilot niya. Okay. So, pag meron na tayong grid, so, ito yung pinaka-default. Let's see, ano ba yung default na topic? So, yung default topic, so lahat ng grids na gagawin natin, automatic yung may default topic. So, sabi dito, welcome to Flipgrid. Tap the green plus below to open the Flipgrid camera. Then record a short video and say hello and share a fun facts about yourselves. Ngayon, ang maganda rin dito, Inclusive ang ating uh, flip grid. Yeah. So, inclusive siya kasi may immersive reader. So, we can click the immersive reader para yung instructions natin, kung ano ba yung general instructions natin na kailangan i-record or gawin ng mga students natin or ng ating mga attendees. Kung medyo malabo ang kanilang mata, ayan. so, pwede natin i-click yung immersive reader. Ayan. So, yung immersive reader, kung familiar kayo dito, meron ito sa, sa, sa OneNote. Ayan. Play natin. Ayan. So, kung medyo malabo at hindi natin nakikita, so again, sa mga immersive reader like this, so pwede nating baguhin yung text size. Kung medyo naliliitan pa tayo, pwede nating palakihan or paliitan. We can also increase or decrease yung ating spacing. Or kung medyo hindi ka sanay sa mga ganong klase ng console, we can, you can use the Calibri, the Sitka, or the Comic Sans. And also, kung medyo masakit, may problem ka pagdating dun sa visual, so pwede natin i-dark mode. Second, kung uh, magkakaroon ka ng problema sa bosses naman, so we can select male or female. So kanina narinig natin yung male, female. So try naman natin ano ba yung bosses ng lalaki dito sa immersive. So, yun. Ano pa yung pwede natin magamit dito? Again, kung meron kang uh, text or general instructions doon or meron kang nilagay doon na content doon sa area na yon, so we can easily identify nasaan doon yung nouns, nasaan doon yung verb, nasaan doon yung adjectives, at nasaan doon yung adverbs. So, yung mga English teachers dito, Ayan. So, pwede tayo mag-create. We can copy a content. For example, a poem. Pwede natin i-paste natin dun sa si area na yon, And then, we can use the immersive reader using this flip. And of course, 
meron din ditong tinatawag kapag naka-enable yung ating picture dictionary, for example, pag clinic ko si camera, ano ba yung itsura ng mga camera na yan? So we have two types. Itong camera na pwedeng pagkuha ng mga picture at yung tinatawag natin. So that's immersive reader. Di ba ang ganda? For inclusive education. Now, so hindi ko babaguhin itong grid na to, uh, itong topic na to, kasi mamaya ay inviting yung mga participants natin na makapasok at magbigay, magpakilala sila mamaya. Try natin na makapasok. Tignan natin kung sino yung mga makakapasok na mga participants natin from this training Ito po yung ating code. Now, kung ready na, kung ready na yung ating instructions, kung ready na yung instruction, pwede mo na siyang i-share again. Yeah, pwede mo na siyang i-share. Now, may kita natin dito na mayroong topic mode, uh, topic guest mode. Ito yung binabanggit natin kanina na na kahit wala sila nung hindi wala silang email address na kagaya ng sa domain mo or kaya naman hindi siya kasali dun sa student list mo so pwede pa rin nating i-invite yung family members halimbawa may nakita ang magandang output or response ng isang estudyante mo at gusto mo ipakita sa isang parents so pwede mo i-invite yung parents para makita niya yung yung output na ginawa ng bata so just click that and then meron siyang specialized, meron siyang specific na code, and QR code na pwede mong ibigay doon sa iyong guest or it's either a family member, halimbawa gusto mong makapasok si principal doon sa ginawa mong grid, yeah, pwede mong ibigay kay principal itong topic guest. Now, ngayon, kung sa tingin mo uh, may gusto kong idagdag, uh, aside from saying hello, uh, pwede rin siyang magpakilala, magpakilala, hindi lang tungkol sa sarili niya, ano ba yung itinuturo niya, ayan. pwede natin i-edit itong default. So, paano natin siya i-edit? Ayan, dito sa pinaka-upper right portion ng ating topic details, nandiyan yung edit, yung lapis, yung pencil. So, we have to click it. Ayan. So yung title nating naka-default is Say Hello on Flipgrid. So mapapansin natin how many letters yung pwede nating gawin doon sa topic natin. So merong 35 lang. So mag-isip tayo ng mga unique title ng ating mga topics, including dyan yung mga spaces. So we have 35 uh, letters na pwedeng gamitin. Yung second is yung prompt. Dito natin ilalagay yung ating pinaka-general instruction. So, say hello, share some facts about yourself, and then yung, pwede natin ilagay yung ICT best practices nila. And like edit tayo. So, you can share ngayon, ano ba yung mga ICT best practices na ginagamit nyo at this point in time? So, for sure, ang dami nyo nang natutunan during the quarantine time, sunod-sunod yung mga ICT training natin or kung ano man yung ginagamit yung uh, ICT tools or learning, learning uh, uh, teaching, and, teaching and learning, so pwede nyo i-share sa amin. So ilan yung capacity? That's 1,000 capacity. 1,000 yung letters including, uh, including the spaces. So 1,000 yung pwede. So again, dito natin ilalagay lahat ng instructions natin. Ano ba yung dapat makikita? Ano ba yung mga dapat marinig or responses doon sa gagawin mong topic? Next is recording time. Ilang minutes yung capacity ng topic mo? Yeah. So 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45. 1 minute hanggang 10 minutes. Actually last year, Hanggang 5 minutes lang siya. So ngayon, medyo mahaba na siya. So ngayon, for this time, gagawin lang natin siyang 1 minute. So bakit? Ano yung purpose? So kung napakadami yung mga students natin, kung napakadami yung ating mga, mga participants natin na magbibigay ng kanilang mga videos nito, mag upload ng kanilang mga videos, imagine kung 10 minutes yan, 
di ba? May mga students tayo na talagang gustong-gustong magsalita o may mga participants tayo na talagang uubusin nila yung 10 minutes na yon. At kung meron kang 50, so 50 times 10, so napakadami parang nanonood ka na ng ilang movies yon. So, I'm suggesting yung best practice dito, we can use 1 minute, 1.5 or 1 minute and 30 seconds para maturuan natin yung mga students natin na within a short period of time is makapsulize nila, brief, concise, but complete yung ideas na ilalagay nila doon sa period. Pero kung activity naman natin is that gumagawa sila talaga ng docu-films nila or kailangan ng mas mahaba, so pwede namang 10 minutes. But for this activity, 1 minute yung ilalagay nating record time. Next, dito naman sa right portion, sa right area ng recording time, nandiyan yung tinatawag nating video moderation. So para saan naman dito? So sabi dito, it moderated videos will be hidden from student until you activate them. So meaning to say, once na yung estudyante natin o yung participants natin ay nag-upload ng video niya, pag ito ay naka-enable, meaning to say, yung owner lang or si teacher lang muna ang makakakita ng videos. Once na mapanood niya at sa tingin niya, wala namang na-violate doon sa kanyang instructions, tama naman. Walang mga vulgar words na ginawa yung bata. So pwede niya nang i-share ito. So pero kung sa tingin mo na uh, sanay na yung mga bata doon sa mga instructions na ibinibigay mo, so para mas mabilis nilang makita kasi minsan na nagiging problema ng bata especially pagdating sa internet connections minsan nagdo-doble-doble yung pag-upload nila ng mga videos so minsan nakala nila hindi na na-upload and then pag-check ni teachers meron ng sampu or meron ng limang same videos na naka-upload anyway as an owner of this grid pwede ka naman pwede mo naman siyang i-delete so hindi ko na siya i-tick para automatic lahat ng video na papasok is automatic makikita nila kung na-upload na ba yung video nila. And then, syempre, marami sa atin, marami sa mga estudyante natin hindi nagbabasa ng instructions. Especially kung maraming text kang ilalagay dito sa prompt, hindi yan minsan binabasa ng mga bata or kung babasahin man, ang tanong nila, ano nga ba ulit yung instructions? So para mabigyan ng hint, yung mga bata natin doon sa instructions natin. So, pwede tayong magbigay ng specific or one-liner or one-word na topic tip na pag nakita nila yun, ah, kailangan pala, introduction lang pala. Yan. Ang gusto lang palang ipagawa doon sa video ay magkaroon tayo ng self-introduction just to say hi. Pero ang dami kong inilagay doon. And then, ano pa yung mga pwede natin ilagay dito? So, pwede rin tayong maglagay kung ang gamit ng grid naman natin ay para sa klase natin at merong kang kailangan mong, magkailangan mo nang may basahin or kailangan mo nang may panoorin video yung bata bago siya makapag, makapag-send ng kanyang, makapag-generate ng kanyang video. So, pwede natin maglagay tayo dito ng mga resources using link so kung ito ay nakasave sa ating cloud, just copy, just copy the, the, the link. Or kung ito naman ay nasa mga websites natin or nasa YouTube videos natin, yeah. so just copy the link and then paste it and then attach files. And then don't forget the title. Next, yung grid natin, yeah. ilalagay natin siya, meron siya tatlong status, active, frozen, and hidden. So pag sinabi natin active, meaning to say, pag na-access ng bata yung grid mo, automatic makikita niya na yung questions, yung topic, and then pwede na siyang mag-submit ng kanyang video. Pag nakalagay naman na frozen, makikita, makapanood niya lang yung mga active videos doon, pero hindi na siya makakapag-send ng kanyang video. Again, pag active, yung status ng topic mo, mapapanood niya yung mga videos na uploaded and makakapag-send siya ng kanyang response video. Pag frozen naman, ibig sabihin, 
mapapanood niya yung mga existing videos na naka-upload pero hindi siya makakapag-send ng kanyang response video. So hindi na siya makakapag-upload. Pag hidden naman, ibig sabihin, hindi na nila makikita. Hindi siya deleted, nakatago lang siya. So hindi makikita ng mga bata yung mga active uh, topics na nandoon sa grid natin. Okay po? Next. So since we are talking about asynchronous, di ba? So hindi natin alam po ang mga estudyante ba natin ay may internet connection. So sometimes or most of the times, bigyan natin sila ng mas mahabang panahon para makapag-create ng kanilang mga video responses. So nandito yung launch and freeze dates. So pwede natin i-click. So for example, magpo-frozen siya. Yan. So active active siya starting today and then makakaantayin ko aantayin ko yung kanilang responses after sabihin natin hanggang mamaya or hanggang bukas ba after two days for example hanggang 28 so binibigyan ko sila na makasagot makasagot doon ang makapag-send or makapag-upload ng kanilang mga video within a week So after 28, hindi na sila mga kapag-upload na kanilang mga video responses. Anyway, from time from time to time naman, halimbawa nakita mo na medyo hindi pa sila nakakapag-send kasi umulan, humina ang internet connection. So you can still set naman. Pwede mong baguhin ulit yung payment. So ang best practice ko dyan, ang ginagawa ko dyan is nagbibigay ako ng date. Siyempre ang mga bata, mahilig yan gagawa yan sa mga due date nila. And then ipipress ko, and then doon sila magpapanik. Kasi makikita nila, oh, nakapress na. And then saka sila hihingi. But, of course, if you want to teach them to become irresponsible at makasunod doon sa oras, you can stick on your specific date na nila. So, next. That is what we call the topic status. Next, video features naman. So, anong klase ng features ng video yung kanilang pwedeng isend? So, pwede itong selfie lang. So, selfie video or selfie and video. So, this time, ang gagamitin ko is selfies and videos. So, pwede... Ayan. Sir Michael. Yes, ko. Ayan. Thank you, Sir Michael, for sharing uh, yung mga features ng ating flip grid. Grabe. Ang dami pa palang pwedeng gawin si teacher na settings, no? Like, uh, pag bibigay ng deadline and kung uh, at the same time pwede lagyan din ng password so maraming pwedeng settings even sa video so i think uh, we have yes question sir like ano daw pong code ayan ito po nakikita yes, niyo sa screen meron tayong ginawa na flip grid for the ETU so you may share your ETU webinar experience Uh, by typing, kasi may mga nag may message sir na teachers, ano daw pong code? Kasi ang nakikita agad nila ay code para makapasok sa Flipgrid. So ang itatype nyo po ngayon ay yung nakikita ninyo sa dulo, that's 8AC70394 as a student. Kunwari as a participant, pwede po kayo doon mag-post ng inyong uh, selfie video for the webinar experience. Ayan. Sir Michael, okay. any last... Uh, Message or last advice kung uh, how they're going to use Flipgrid in this new normal classroom. Ah, okay. So, yung mga best practice natin dito, of course, alamin muna natin ano ba yung purpose ng paggawa natin ng na grid. Again, uh, yung, yung haba, yung, yung katalan na banggit ko kanina is that check natin, huwag natin masyadong habaan yung mga video responses ng mga bata. And third, ito mahalaga tong video feature sir, tapusin ko lang to. Kasi nga, ang gusto natin is ma-encourage yung mga students natin na mag-post ng mga videos nila. Parang hinihikahit natin silang huwag silang mahiya. So, kaya meron dito mga options. Minsan kasi may mga bata baka mawalan sila ng gana na mag-upload ng videos nila kasi makita nila, ay, ang konti lang ng likes ng videos ko. So, pwede mong disabled yung likes para equally, hindi nila makikita kung sino ba yung most likable videos. So, pwede mo naman din ilagay. Or, 
sa abuse count din naman kung sa tingin mo makaka-discourage ito sa mga bata na oh, walang nanonood sa videos ko. So, pwede lang i-disable itong view count. Or kung gusto naman ma-encourage ma- 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 or ma-motivate yung mga bata na manood pa ng mga videos, pwede natin i-click yung view count. So, kung ready na siya, again, ready din siya. Meron din dito for the teachers. Meron din dito ng rubrics para madali natin mabibigyan ng grade yung mga so, kung ready na siya, and then update the topic, and then you may now share your... Ayan, you may now share your video, ay yung, 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 iyong, yung iyong code, or your using code, or what we call the uh, QR code doon sa ating mga participant. I think, sir, may mga nakapag-send na. Ayan, ang dami nang nag-send ng kanilang mga videos no, sa yes. simple instructions natin. Now, ito, mahalaga to, sir, bago ko makalimutan. Halimbawa, sa grid. Sa grid mo, merong tatlong topics. So, minsan ang mga bata, nalilito. Nalilito sila, nagkakamali sila. Ah, nailagay ko yung sagot ko sa isang topic. So, pwede nating i-move yung responses ng bata from one topic to another. Or, Kung meron kang mm. four sections, yes, dun po yun. Makikita natin sa action. So we can move yung response ng bata from one grid to another or from one topic to another or kung medyo, kung same topic lang naman ang kailangan mo at kailangan mo siyang ulitin ng tatlong beses sa mga iba't ibang mga sections na hawak mo, so you can duplicate the, the grid or the topic para hindi ka pa ulit-ulit nagsaset. And of course, you can also download the video Yan, parang merong kang ka. And of course, yung mga each video na yan, for example, kay Sir Edward Peco, yan, each video niya na yan, ay pwede nating i-share, pwedeng mapanood natin yan. So, ayan, meron siyang sariling flip code na pwedeng i-share sa mga social media account para pwede nating i-share yung mga gawa na mga so, ito yung mga basic sa paggawa ng ating flip grid. May oras pa tapos, sir, o time's up na? Ayan. Very nice. Yeah, galing, ang galing. Na-inspired na silang lahat. Ano masasabi mo, <laughs> Ma'am Marie? Gustong-gusto na nilang gumawa lahat. Yes. Actually, excited sila dyan sa itinuro mo, sir. Yan, gusto nila explore. Actually, yes. iba, nag, nag ano na, sir, eh. Ina- Nag-explore na sila. Na nila. Opo, in-access na nila, lalo na yung link, sir. Ayan. Ano, so, ito maganda. Natin. Opo. Go ahead, sir. Ayan. Ayan, ito, ito pinakabago ito eh. Parang I think last, last, last month lang yata ito, within this year lang ito. Itong tinatawag natin short. Ayan. Kung, kung meron tayong, itong short na to hindi mo na kailangan magkaroon ng YouTube account. Kung halimbawa, pahili kang gumawa ng mga mahilig kang gumawa ng mga video greetings sa mga friends mo o kaya naman yung parents mo. Ito maganda to kung, ma- kung may parents ka na medyo ulianin na or may ang tawag ba rin, dementia ba ang tawag doon or may mga kids tayo na isinasama natin sa isinasama natin sa mall and then maraming tao so sometimes naliligaw, nawawala so pwede tayong gumawa ng video nila na hey this is my mother, this is my son kung sakaling makita mo siya, ito yung contact details, etc., etc. Pwede kang gumawa ng video dyan. And then, pag nagawa ka na ng video dyan, and then, ilagay mo ngayon yung QR code sa mga bracelet nila or sa ID nila para pag nawala sila, uy, pwede lang scan yung video na yun at ay yung, yung QR code na yun para mapanood nila yung video na yun. Ah, ito pala siya. Wow. Alright. Thank you so much. Sir Michael, for sharing Flipgrid to us. I know uh, excited na yung mga fellow educators natin na mag-share at gamitin ito sa kanilang new normal classroom. And paalala lang po sa ating mga uh, webinar participants, this is just one alternative no or learning delivery or uh, uh, applications no hindi namin ito sinasabi na ito yung gamitin ninyo again this is an option at kayo po ang mas may idea or nakakalam kung sa tingin ninyo this will be applicable sa aking classroom or not no or sa mga learners 
na like for example no may mga learners tayo na walang intention and may mga areas tayo na hindi available ang mga yung technology na yan all right so again Tama thank po. you so much sir Michael Morelia virtual class thank you sir Michael sir thank you thank you po thank you all right so thank you sir Michael Ready na tayo, Ma'am Marie, ipakilala yes, mo yes. na ang ating next the guest speaker for this morning. Yes, sir. Sir Kapatid, I have an honor to present to you our next speaker, no other than Ma'am Rubilin C. Pestrano, Doctor in Development of Education, Science and Technology Education Center, Division of Lapu-Lapu City Region 7, a Microsoft Certified Educator, a Microsoft Education Ambassador, a Microsoft Innovative Education Expert. No other than, again, Ms. Rubelin Pastrano. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, Hello Pops. Hello, Rubelin. <laughs> Hello. Okay, an amazing and awesome morning to everyone. Lalo na teachers abroad, right? And of course, magandang umaga sa lahat sa Tagalog areas and some other parts of Luzon. Okay, uh, of course, our national language is Filipino, right? Yes, okay, maayong buntag! Maayong buntag! And for the maayong rest buntag. of uh, the teachers from Mindanao, maayong buntag! Yay! <laughs> I'm so All grateful right, take it away. to be here this take morning. Uh, yes. Okay. So, about one note. Okay. And of course, uh, one note is something uh, great, a great tool that we can utilize for our personal files or for our. Uh, resources okay now uh, I will be sharing to you my file okay hello okay a moment Ayan, so habang inaantay natin si ma'am uh, na nagsaset, so again, this kanina, we okay, have our my topic is session. all about OneNote. Yes, all right. Okay. Now, when we talk about OneNote, okay, it's a digital version of your physical notebook. Of course, as teachers, we have bulk of notes, right? Uh, notes for our personal consumption, for our meetings with our fellow teachers, and most especially for the teaching and learning resources, okay? Please take note the hashtag, my notebook. Ayan, so while we are we are fixing ayan ang internet, internet connection, connection ni Ma'am Rubilin. Yes. Pasok natin si Sir Michael. Yes, Sir Michael. Hello. Hi Sir Michael. Mukhang uh, nangyayari talaga ang uh, oh, sir. Uh, internet traffic issues <laughs> nangyayari talaga yan. Yes. Sir Michael, uh, pasok na yes, tayo sir. sa OneNote. Can you share to us your uh, how do you use OneNote application? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, sir. Hello? Ayan. So, yes, yes. Yeah. Ayan. So, nasa isang laptop ko kasi yung, yung, yung aking OneNote. Anyway, so, ang best practice ko sa paggamit ng OneNote is that OneNote is, uh, meron tayong iba't ibang mga versions ng OneNote. Baka kasi uh, malito sila na, ah, bakit? yung pinapakita sa screen, wala sa screen ko. So, meron tayong tinatawag na ang OneNote pwedeng online or pwedeng offline. So, 
today, our workshop, we are using the Windows 10 apps. So yung pinaka-latest is the Windows 10 apps. And then, doon sa mga devices naman natin, meron dyan mga default na, na matagal nang nakatago yung mga OneNote natin na hindi natin ginagamit. So we have the OneNote 2013, the OneNote 2016, and of course, yung latest nga, Windows 10. So yung Windows 10 app, we can use that only kung meron tayong internet connections. So hindi natin siya magagamit yung Windows 10 app kung wala tayong internet, but yung mga naka-default na, yung mga naka-install na, Doon sa ating mga laptop, like the 2016, 2013, yan, we can use that kahit wala tayong internet connection. So, so basically, OneNote is note-taking. So, pwede tayong mag-note dyan na pwede nating i-share yung notebook natin doon sa mga students natin o sa mga colleagues natin. So, pwede natin siyang magamit as learner's management system. Pwede natin siyang maging uh, repository ng mga outputs ng mga bata natin. So once na available na yung internet connections natin, we can easily share these files dun sa mga students natin. Okay. Try kong magbukas ng aking uh, OneNote online. All right, sir. I think, uh, yan, nandiyan na si Ma'am Rubilin. Ma'am. Okay. Hi, yes, ma'am. Yes, madam. Okay na po. Okay, sir. Okay na. Okay na. Ma'am, naputol. Nagkaroon okay ng na interruption. Ba? Okay na po ba, sir? Yes, Ay, ma'am. <laughs> yes. All right. Again. So, naputol tayo, ma'am, sa in-production ng inyong uh, uh, OneNote. And nung naputol kayo, ma'am, nagsishare kanina si Sir Michael Morell kung saan niya ginagamit ang OneNote. So, sinabi yes, niya, yung po. best practice niya is that it can be used online and offline. So mm -hmm. with that, uh, Ma'am Ruby Lin, you may continue the discussion po. Thank you. All right. Thank so you, Sir we, Michael. Yes, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Sir Michael. Thank you, Sir Mark. So again, it's a digital version of your physical notebook. So now, what's amazing with OneNote, we our mobile phone, in our tablet, iPad, our personal computers like laptop or desktop. We can capture and organize everything. We can access our files anytime, anywhere. Why? We can use OneNote both in online platform and offline. Because as teachers, our internet connection sometimes is not that stable. So we need an offline uh, platform. So uh, this time I will have the I will be giving you the system requirements, especially if you're using laptop. Okay, so we are ex going to explore the OneNote for Windows 10, okay? But still you can use your OneNote in your mobile phone or in some other devices. So we need to consider this operating system, Windows 10, with this kind of version or mobile version. And in Windows 8.1, it is uh, it is also available, okay? So this is just an overview on how to install. For those who have a, an Office 365 account, uh, in your dashboard, you can look at there, Install Office. So it is one of the productivity tools that you can install in your devices with Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, okay? But there are cases that OneNote will not go with them. So no worries, okay? Why? Because you can install OneNote, okay? How? You can go to any web browser like Microsoft Edge, Mozilla, Safari, Internet Explorer, or even in Google Chrome. And if you have that already in your device, you can sign in your Office 365 account or any Microsoft account. That means to say, even if you're a teacher in private school, you can also use this OneNote, okay? So with that, this is a sample on how to install if ever you have no Office 365 account or it does not installed with the other productivity tools. So you can go to uh, any browser, Okay, type free download of OneNote, especially for Windows 10. Okay, you can click that one. And of course, you can sign in. So 
my sample here is my Office 365 account. We thank you so much, DepEd, for paying this for us. So uh, DepEd is trying their best to provide the best tools for us teachers. So it's up to us on how to utilize it, okay, to increase engagement in our learners and for us to be more productive and efficient in our job. And of course, uh, here, sometimes in, when we install OneNote in our devices, there are cases like this. You have OneNote 2016 and you have OneNote. The latest one, okay, is being highlighted with the yellow boxes. Okay, that's the latest OneNote. There are new features in that uh, version. All right. Now, this time, I will introduce you first the uh, what's the difference between uh, OneNote in your desktop being installed in your desktop or in the browser, especially if you have Office 365 account. Now, what I'm showing now, all right, is what you can see in your installed OneNote, okay? So you can use it offline, okay? This is, what, uh, this is what's an advantage of OneNote installed in your PC or device because you can use it offline. But when you are connected to the internet, automatically it will sync. Everything will sync. All right. Now, if you are not able to install an Office uh, uh, OneNote in your device, you can also go to the browser at www.portal.com and you can click OneNote for those who have Office 365 account, okay? Now, uh, as you can see here, this is the interface or the landing page of OneNote in a web browser. As you can see, there is a, a link there, okay? You can browse anything there, right? So there's a little bit difference, but everything is um, almost similar, right? Now here, if you can see there are a uh, split screen, okay? Now on the left side, you can see the uh, offline or installed OneNote in your device. And on the right is the uh, OneNote in your browser, if you will open it there, right? Now, let's have the parts of OneNote. We need to get to know the parts of OneNote or the anatomy of OneNote. Okay, there are three essential parts of OneNote. Of course, as teachers, when we talk about notes, of course, uh, there are different kinds of notes. Uh, we have the physical notebook sometimes. We have the sticky notes. But here we are talking about the digital notebook. So the three parts are notebooks, sections, and pages. Okay? Let's get to know them. All right. Now let's move now to the anatomy of OneNote or the parts of OneNote. Basically, on the top uh, is the ribbon okay and the ribbon uh there are some tabs there home tab answer tab draw view okay later we will discover what's inside that tabs all right now as you can see here uh it's like a pile pile of books okay that's what we call as notebook when you click that you can hide or unhide the different notebooks if you have created some okay then I have here a sample, Science 4, Science 5. These are the subject that I'm teaching. So these are sections, okay? Then uh, with a section, when we click one of that sections, like for example, uh, I will click Music 4 or Science 4, okay? I can create pages, okay, or page. And uh, a page being highlighted here is the curriculum guide. And on the right side, that's a sample of the content of the page. So again, there are three 
essential parts in one note. You have the notebook, sections, and pages. I will run through first the uh, PowerPoint presentation, then later I will do the demo, and we can do a lot of activities on how to uh, create notebooks, how to add sections, and how to add pages. All right. Now let's start with creating notebooks. Okay, the first thing that we should do is, of course, open OneNote desktop. If you have your OneNote installed in your uh, devices, please open it, okay? You can go along with me, all right? Uh, if ever you cannot follow through with this PowerPoint presentation, anyway, we still have another chance during the demonstration, all right? So open OneNote desktop, or if you have it in your mobile device, please do it now. Then show notebooks button, okay? Now the one that is being boxed, okay? That's, uh, that's how to show notebook button. If you click that, you can hide and unhide some notebooks if you have some. Okay, so that's how to show notebooks. Next to that, okay, you can click that uh, symbol if you want to see if there are hidden notebooks, okay? Especially if, uh, if you have created some notebooks already, so you can click that to check what are the hidden notebooks. And when you click that in the left, uh, in the bottom left of your screen, okay, what I'm showing is the uh, platform if you're using laptop. So for those who are using a mobile phones, I know you have different interface there, but uh, I know you can take your time to explore. All right, so let's go ahead. When you click that add notebook, Okay, you are required to name your notebook. So in my case, I write my notebook with the title, My Teaching Resources, because I want to consolidate my teaching resources. I want to be prepared before the class is started. Okay, so actually uh, teachers have a lot of resources already, but the problem is, uh, we were not able to consolidate it and sort it properly. So here, when you create a notebook, there are cases that it lets us choose which account to save the files. So in my case, I utilize the Office 365 account, or if you have only Microsoft account, like Outlook.com, that would be fine. Okay, all right. Now, uh, with that, you can click Create Notebook below, okay? So when you click Create Notebook, okay, we have now a notebook. Okay, so that's the first activity that we will be doing, okay? How to create a notebook. But I will run through first how to create a notebook, how to create a section, and how to create pages. Then after that, we will demo everything, okay? I will exit to this presentation, okay? So if you have that a notebook, okay, supposedly let's do it, but uh, we need to save time. So I will be giving you these steps, all right? The first step, to create notebook is open OneNote desktop. Second, show notebooks button. Third, click plus sign notebook. And the fourth, name your notebook. And fifth, click create notebook. We will do it later. Okay, so that's how to create notebook. So I will proceed on how to add sections. Okay, don't worry if you were not able to follow because uh, we still have demonstration after this presentation. 
Now let's move on how to add sections, all right? So in my part, I click the, or I choose my notebook, my teaching resources, okay? Then when I choose that, okay, when I click that, you can see in the bottom left, there's add section, okay? How to add section, all right? Okay, so when I click that add section, okay, I created or I added these sections. Later, I will show you how to add sections. So I will just show you. So in my case, I'm teaching Science 4, Science 5, Science 6, ESP 5, and some other subjects. Just imagine, dear teachers, if we have this uh, bulk of subjects to be taught daily, then we are not prepared. What happened to us? Okay, from the lesson planning, preparing our instructional materials, and some other activities. Oh, we will not be enjoying and we will not be giving quality education to our learners. So that's why we need to prepare. Okay, so we need to consolidate all our teaching and learning material. So that's just an example of my uh, section. Okay, I divided it according to the subjects I'm teaching. Okay, so it's up to you if you will follow my sample. It's just a sample. Okay, now if you created your section, okay, uh, sometimes we need to customize or you want to customize. As you can see there, it's very colorful. So you can click a section. So here, I click Science 5. When you right-click a section, okay, there's a drop-down list. Okay, you can delete section. What if uh, I don't like this section or I, I don't like this to be part of my section, so I will delete. It's fine. Or I will change my section in my notebook. Yes, you can do it by clicking rename section. And you can also move or, uh, for example, I want to arrange my sections in alphabetical order. No worries. You can do that. You can move up and down. Or you can copy it. And, oh, my favorite color is red, for example. So I can change the color of the sections. Or all signs must be green. Okay, all mape or music must be yellow. You can do that. You can customize everything here. All right? Or you want to copy link to section. Or if your file in your section is confidential, you can make... Uh, you can put password, okay? You can protect your files. That's what amazing in adding section. So again, there are three essential parts. We have notebook, section, and now let's move to pages. How to add pages, okay? Now, with our section, we can add pages first, okay? Uh, make sure you click a certain section, okay? So my, in my sample here, okay, I choose sign six. So I tried to add, uh, yeah, I added pages, curriculum guide, budget of work, lesson plan, okay? You can do that or it's up to you what pages do you want to add. So how, okay? At the bottom part, you can see a plus sign, add page. All you have to do is to click that add page. Then, okay, you will be lead, uh, you will be guided with a cursor, okay? Uh, you can write the title of your page where the cursor is, okay? So, like in the last part of the page, untitled, untitled page, I cannot rename there, so uh, I should be there where the cursor is. That's the right place for me to write the title of my page. Okay, so here I uh, add a page entitled Group Work. So anyway, these are just sample. Later, we will make your own. Okay. Now, that's all about the parts of the 
one note i will move now to the demo all right so can you see my screen with one note i hope we have the same one note if ever you have one note 2016 it's still functional don't worry but there are some features that are not available anymore but please uh, take your time to listen so that if you are given if you receive the office 365 account or any available resources you can still use OneNote. now let's have now that demo okay you can join with me okay our time is 10 55 so i hope we can finish on time so all you have to do okay go here in the notebook pane i said when you click this okay you can hide you can unhide the notebooks again i want you to click the notebook pane you can hide or you can unhide then here beside the notebook robeline at depth at region 7-2 when you click that okay so you can see some notebooks here Okay, so let's make a sample. I want you to uh, um, yes, po. Mama, ang nakashare niyo po ay PowerPoint. A PowerPoint pa po. A moment po. Yeah. Oh, sorry po for that. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Again, I what? Oh, uh, it's uh, one note is very a uh, great tool for us to utilize okay how about now sir can you see my one note okay. yeah, yes, all right now let's get started on familiarizing this one note so again on the upper right okay below the home tab that's what you call as the notebook pane you can click that to unhide or uh to hide or unhide the different notebooks so beside the name of the notebook you can click that to check the existing notebook now i want you to go to the bottom left of your screen you can see their plus sign add notebook so everybody let's click this let's try to create notebook so you can also okay uh, in my example my title is my learning uh, sorry my teaching resources you can make your own notebook right you are free to do everything or to customize your notebook okay so after click after writing the title my teaching resources i will choose my account with office 365 Robilinda Pastrano 001 at r7-2.depeda.gov.ph. So after clicking that, click create notebook. So let's wait for a while because uh, we need an internet connection. By the way, I would like to emphasize, yes, we can use OneNote in offline, but in creating notebooks, we need to be online only for creating notebook so mean uh, as long as you have the internet connection you can make as many notebooks all right so i'll try to add another notebook okay because i'm only connected with the internet this time so for example i will make my personal files okay i will create again okay so again in creating notebook you need to be connected with the internet so i created the notebooks my teaching resources and my personal files okay i have now my notebook so that's the first part second essential part is section now i will choose my teaching resources when i click that below okay there's new section one okay so please click that new section one right click okay when i right click the section new section one 
I have choices. I will delete it, rename, move, or what? So I will rename. So again, my sections will be that uh, subjects I taught. So I teach signs for, for example. Okay. Then I have now a section. Oh, I have another subject. So I need to add section. What will I do? Go to the bottom left of your screen. Click add section. Okay. Then one of my subject is signs five. All right. Now I have two sections now. Okay. Oh, I my next subject is sign six. Okay. I will click again. Add section in the bottom left. Click that one. Then write the name of your section. And I have now three sections. Okay. That's how to add section in your notebook. Okay. Now. Oh, um, I want my notebook to be uh, uh, having the same color. For example, my favorite color is red. So I right click, okay, right click the section, then click section color. Okay, there are choices there. If you want it blue, green, orange, it's up to you. So I will choose red. Okay, so science for now becomes red oh yeah i really love red so right click again change the color yeah hey i have two red sections now okay and i will change the color here okay red and it's there okay uh i want to arrange my section uh in uh, i will start with sign six signs five and signs four so all you have to do is to drag it Okay, it's very manageable. You can move your section anywhere. All right, so that's how to manipulate, uh, add sections in your notebook. Okay, all right, so I like the arrangement now. Or if you will change your mind, you can change the color or Ayan, si Ma'am Rubilin, uh, talagang ini-explain niya talaga in detail kung paano natin magagamit ang ating OneNote, specifically yes. sa ating classroom, no, Ma'am Marie? Yes, himay-himay siya gumawa at talagang <laughs> ano, ang usay. Himay, himay, isa-isa. Yan ang nakakabili. Ayan, Sir Michael. Ayan, buti na yan. Diyan pa si Sir yes, Michael. Sir. So, mm -hmm. sa iyong classroom, Sir Michael, how do you use OneNote? Okay, sir. So, I'll be sharing you my, my OneNote. So, I started using OneNote since 2016. So, during that time, okay. Ayan, so habang nag-prepare si Sir Michael, we will mm -hmm. would like to remind our webinar participants na this is recorded. So kung nabibilisan po tayo or uh, natin yung facing ng ating uh, speaker, uh, again, it's recorded at pwede nyo pong balikan. So yes, I think kasi limited lang po yung time natin and hanggang 12 p.m. lang po tayo. And we need or as much as we wanted sana nga bago pa mag-12 kasi alam natin nagpe-prepare ng lunch ang ating mga uh, teachers lalo na yung mga yes, ating mga mommies mga mommies sa yes. teachers alright Sir Michael pakishare nga sa amin how do you use your OneNote ayan Sir nakikita ba? yeah yes sir nakashare na ko ba Sir hindi ba? Um, yes ayan. so I yes. ayan na I'm using OneNote I'm using I've been using OneNote since 2016 when I introduced it to me as a Microsoft Education Ambassador. So during that time, I teach in Palmitone Dynamics. So I have here, so this is my notebook for my class. So during that time, wala pa naman kaming LMS. 
And then, kung nakilang talaga yung oras namin, so yung mga outputs ng mga bata, paano na i-send? So what I did, gumawa ko ng class notebook na namin, so AP Economics. So may kita natin dito sa left side, yung mga sections na hawak ko. So I started it sa dalawang sections muna. For example, itong Aristotle. So may kita natin na itong notebook na to is a right protected notebook. So meaning to say, hindi rin mapasok to ng ibang sections kaya ng binabanggit ni ma'am na pwede tayong maglagay ng password. So check natin kung kaya pang mabuks na kasi 2016 pa ito. Mm -hmm. Ayan, so. Ayan, so may kita natin dito, dun sa sessions na nilagay ko, each of my students ay meron silang tinatawag na page. Ayan, meron sila kanyang nang page na kung saan pwede lang isubmit yung mga outputs na ginagawa nila. Actually, pwede na siya isend sa mga social media site natin. Kaya lang sa mga group chat natin ng tendencies, natatabunan yung mga outputs ng baka. Or pwede naman nilang i-email, kaya lang sa sobrang dami ang sudyante natin, minsan napilito na tayo natatabunan yung mga input natin. So, dito sa OneNote, mas nagiging organized, so pwede na rin siyang remitting LMS na maging repository ng mga outputs ng mga class. So, for example, this 2016 pa is still available pa rin yung mga resources ng mga mga. Another thing, kung medyo, medyo mahihirapan ka naman maglagay ng pangalan ng mga bata, so pwede naman siyang by group. So, yung lahat ng outputs ng mga bata, dito na nila isasin. So, i-click lang nila yung link na ibibigay ni pictures and then all the links na nakasave dun sa cloud nila, we can access this anytime, anywhere, as long as may internet connection. So, yeah. Ayan. And then, real Thank time you, link ito. Ayan. Ayan. All right. Sige po. Thank you, Sir Michael, for sharing your uh, one note sa iyong class na ginamit mo pa. Way back 2016, tama ba, Sir? Yes, this class is 2016 pa yung one note na to. Ayan, Kaya yung mga ayan. best practices si ng mga bata, still yes. existing pa din. So Sorry, parang portfolio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Notebook. A notebook. Ayan. Ayan, si Ma'am Rubilin, uh, I think na nakaka-experience si na Ma'am ng power outage. Tama ba, Ma'am? Yes po. Yes po. Mm. Okay. Baga lang internet ayan. connection. Yeah. Uh, Okay po, can I yes. continue po? All right. Yes. Take it away, ma'am. So thank you so much, Sir Michael, for uh, bridging the gap. Okay, so we're done with creating the section. Okay, so I know there are teachers who uh, use this platform for the first time. So we need to consider them. Okay, thank you so much, Sir Michael, for sharing your best practices and utilizing OneNote. Anyway, let's move now on how to create the page. So make sure you select a section. So click a section. And with this, uh, there's an untitled page. You cannot edit here, right? So you will go here with uh, the cursor. For example, I need to put there my lesson plan for Science 6, for example. Okay, lesson plan, right? Oh, I need another page for... Um, for example, for my uh, PowerPoint presentations, it's just a sample, okay? Okay, PowerPoint presentations. All right. So I have now two pages. So that's how to add page. And for the page as well, you can also right-click it. Same thing with a uh, section. You can delete, you can rename, you can cut, copy, paste, okay, move, or you can also uh, pin page to start button, okay? So you can also move from one place to another, right? Now, we're done with uh, creating notebook, adding section, and adding pages. So let's try to navigate the thing that we can use in OneNote. All right, so uh, uh, I will share again my screen because I need an audio, right? I will stop sh uh, I will stop the sharing first, and I will go back in a while, okay? 
I need an audio this time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So share an audio. All right. Now, as you can see here, for example, I need to create another page. Okay. At the bottom, click plus sign, add page. Okay. So the first thing that we can see in the home tab is dictate so it's one of the tool that is inclusive okay so that's what i like with one uh, with microsoft because they consider inclusive education so we can see here on the upper right uh microphone which is dictate now here i want the title of my uh page uh i will title it with uh, for example, homework. Okay, so what will I do? I will not type anything, but I will just dictate. So click the microphone or the office dictation button. Make sure it turns red. Homework. Okay, yes, dictate did it for me. I did not utilize my keyboard. So in this activity, we can also assess the pronunciation of our students or even us teachers, okay? How well do we pronounce English words? But there are settings that we need to consider. When you use this dictate, please check the setting of the language. So as Filipinos, we are uh, trained uh, to speak English uh, accordingly to English United States. So we will click this one. If you're done, you can use your microphone. So for example, okay, so I will write a homework, okay? I will ready, I will click the dictate button. Make sure there are no other uh, noise around when you do it, okay? With the use of PowerPoint presentation, make a research on circulatory system, period. All right, wow, Dictate did it for me. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot to close the uh, microphone, all right, so. That's an example. That's how dictate works. So make sure if you're done uh, dictating, you click the dictate icon or the office dictation icon, and it must be turn. Uh, the color must be in blue. Okay, but if you want to dictate again, make sure the color is red. Okay. So again, for the last one, okay, I will dictate something. Uh, I will have another page for example uh, okay another one I will click things to buy okay so I was not able to pronounce it properly again I will do it right things to buy New line. Again, the title. Uh, sorry, things to buy must be the title. Forgot. I will do it again. Okay. Things to buy. Then with that, you can also edit using your keyboard, all right? All right, then put the cursor where you want to dictate again the things to buy. Milk, new line. Salt, new line. Water, new line. 
New line. Milk, comma. Water, comma. Salt. Okay, if there are words that is not uh, pronounced properly, you can edit. Right. Now, that's how good Dictate is. Okay, that's one of the feature in Office 365 OneNote. Another thing, so if there are things to buy here, okay, like for example, as teachers, we have some competencies in our lessons, all right? So we have some lessons in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Sad thing to say sometimes that teachers are not uh, able to comply or to deliver all those competencies. Why? Because we did not monitor our learning competencies. So we can use these tags, there are different tags, sorry, the tag is here. Okay, this is another feature of OneNote. We can put tags on things to do, like for example, on the things to buy, okay. You can put tags there by clicking this part to do, okay. So there's a box on it where you can check if you're able to buy these things, okay. So if you're able to buy milk, you can put a check. Okay, so we can use this as a monitoring tool. All right, another thing. Oh, the most important thing is for my baby's milk. So you can put a star. Okay, water is very important. Okay, another one. Uh, maybe this time, uh, so uh, water is not available. So you can put a question mark. Okay, so this is how to add tags. Okay, this is how to add tags. So th these are just uh, the one of the features of Office OneNote. Now let's move to Answer tab. In the Answer tab, okay, there are things that we can do. For example, in the activity, uh, in the page homework, right? Let's try this one in the page homework. By the way, this is what I like with creating pages in OneNote because it's real time. You're doing it in a real time, okay? There's a date here, Thursday, 21 of May, 2020. Okay, I created that homework page at that date. So now let's move to inserting file, okay? I want to insert a file, for example, in here, lesson plan, for example. Time I created this at 11 a.m. So. In inserting a file, there are two ways here, okay? So you can insert a file. I will choose a PDF file, okay, documents, okay. Okay, all right, for example, this one, open, okay? I have choices. Can I insert it? Uh, upload to OneDrive and insert link or insert attachment or insert a print out. Now, it depends on your need. If you want that material to be printed, okay, you can insert a print out. So we will try. All right. This is how it looks. Okay, when you insert a file, print out. So you can print it. How to print it? So you can click this one. And after clicking that, all right. Okay, so you can now print your file now going back to uh insert tab again how to insert file so in another page for example i will insert a file okay another file for example open all right so i will uh insert as attachment okay but this is not, uh, okay, you cannot open and edit embedded files from OneNote. So this is how it looks like. But if you will insert a file, for example, I will insert a PowerPoint presentation. You cannot insert it there right away. Okay, how? For example, this file, when I insert that, okay, I cannot insert this as attachment or insert as printout. Okay, I will try. Okay, oh, you can, all right? But there's another way, 
The third choice, okay? The other choice is attaching it. For, okay, you can upload to OneDrive and insert the link. Okay. Yes, there you have it. Okay, that's how manageable OneNote is. Within a page, you can attach everything. You can attach picture. And this is what I like most as well. Okay, for example, okay, online video. Okay, how to attach online video? It's very simple. Okay, so you will go to a browser. Okay, you need to go to a browser. For example, in YouTube.com. Okay. Uh, okay, I have 10 minutes left. All right. So I have a video here, for example. Uh, I will search about circulatory system. Can you see my screen? Okay. So, for example, I have the... Okay, I will get the link, of course. Don't you see? Copy. All right. You can paste it in your OneNote. Okay, here. Okay. Show V. All right. It automatically attach. So if teachers take time to uh, gather their teaching resources, just imagine you don't need to go to YouTube every moment of your day, but you can you can consolidate everything here in your OneNote. It automatically plays here in your OneNote. That's how to add online video. How about adding link? You can also insert link. All right. So there are uh things that we need to do uh this is what i like adding link why uh i will make a new page for example okay lesson plan okay so here i will get the link of my onedrive files because i have files in my onedrive so i'll click onedrive okay then I will go to my lesson plan, for example. Okay, then lesson plan for first quarter. I have some already. So all I have to do, I will click here, the ellipsis beside the file. Then after clicking that, I will copy the link. Then I will, uh, the title of my, uh, Lesson plan is, uh, for example, lesson plan one. Okay, then I will click the address here. I will control V, paste. I will paste it here, enter. So I have now a link. So if I click that, it will lead me to my lesson plan in OneDrive. Another one. So you can, you know, this is very helpful for all of us teachers. All right. Now you can also add audio. For example, you're attending seminar. And you can't concentrate because everybody's very noisy or the speaker is very fast. So all you have to do is to click the audio and it starts to record now. Okay. And if you're done, you can click stop. Oh, this feature of OneNote is a discreet, uh, sometimes a discreet way of recording things. Okay. Let's try to play. All right, so it it attached immediately. Okay, so that's how to insert video. We're still in insert tab. Another thing that I like with OneNote is the feature researcher. I know if your OneNote is not uh, for Windows 10, there's no researcher available, but it's fine. I will try, for example, my topic about the heart. Okay, so I have no time to prepare my lesson. I have only five to ten minutes before my class. So OneNote can help me by clicking researcher. All right, so yes, I have here. I will not go anywhere else, but within my page, I will uh, type heart. Okay, then relevant topics will come out. Yes, I have here now. So I can add this one to my page. Yay! Yeah, hey, that's how fast. That's how fast to prepare 
materials for our teaching using OneNote with the researcher. So that's one of the examples. Or I want to add some, okay? So there are many things that we can enjoy here in OneNote. So utilizing researcher. Now, uh, in the draw tab also, okay, I will move to draw tab. I will add another page. Okay, now there are some pens here, colorful pens, okay, for math. Okay, let's have math subject, for example. Okay, I have here a sample. I want you to see it. Okay, so for example, I'm going to have simple algebra. Okay. This is the page. Uh, okay, I can see the bar. All right. So let's try to make new page here. Okay, this equation, for example. Okay, 3x plus 5 minus 2. Okay. With the use of the pen, we highlight this one. Three, okay, X. Okay, for God. Okay, three X plus five. Okay, three X plus five. Okay, minus 2 equals 33. Minus 2 equals, oh, sorry, equals 33, for example. Okay, then click this lasso select, highlight this one, all right? Then click math. All right, it gives me this one. 3x plus 5 minus 2 equals 33. Then click ink to math. All right. Then, why it's not showing? Okay, ink to math. All right, there you have it on the right side. Okay. Let's solve for x, okay. Solve for x, these are the steps here. You can drag it here and how to solve the x of your equation by simply dragging steps using factoring, for example. Or you have another options and how to solve that. You can have graph both sides in 3D, for example. And again, you can insert that on the page. That's how awesome uh, OneNote is. All right. Now for the last, we have the immersive reader. Okay. So immersive reader will read it for us. I hope you can. So another tool for inclusive education. All right, that's all about OneNote. Okay, uh, supposedly, I will bring you to OneNote class notebook, okay? For that two minutes, I will bring you there to my teams, okay? Uh, I just want you to see how beautiful the platform is. Oh, my team is slugged out. Sorry for that. Okay. Okay, now... Uh, instead of going to class notebook, we will focus now on one notebook. And by the way, if ever you happen to delete a page or a section unintentionally, don't worry. You can click here, the deleted notes. Okay, you can retrieve it. Another thing with OneNote, there's no save button. Everything is saved and synced online. 
how did uh, how can I prove you that it's sync online? So I will go to my uh, dashboard and I will click OneNote. Let's see if you can see my notebooks there. Okay. So even if you lost your cell phone, you lost your device. Okay, this is my notebooks. All right, it automatically open. Okay, so when I click this one, okay, I will try to find the notebooks I created, my personal file. Yes, it's here. Another I created this morning, my teaching resources. Yes, it's there. So that's how awesome OneNote is. And thank you so much. And that ends my talk this morning. So thank you so much. Back to you, Sir Michael. Sir Mark. Hi. Thank you, Mom Rubelin, for that very wonderful Thank you, Mom Rubelin. Cops. Yeah. Yeah. Ang galing, galing. Ang dami palang features ni OneNote. Yes. No, you... I ang, uh, like nakinikater niya it's for an inclusive education so uh, from the dictation and then yung ink to math nakakatuwa yung ink to math lalo na sa mga math yes. teachers no kapag i-copy mag-type ka lang ng formula may automatic na pala na step by step kung paano siya isusolve and yung kanina nga na immersive reading mamari no yes opo opo napakaganda nung immersive reading kumbaga hindi mo na kailangan mapagod magbasa siya ang magbabasa for you di ba so maganda po yun, lalo na po sa mga bata natin na medyo mahina sa reading. So from there, nakikita agad yung mga letters na nagbabasa mag-isa, naririnig pa ng bata. So magandang strategy din po ito sa pagtuturo, lalo na sa sa English subject natin, sa language. Tama po ba, Sir, Sir Maj? Yes, Ma'am Marie. So sobrang uh, nakakatuwa no, na in a very short time, na-explain sa atin ni Ma'am Ruby Lynn yung mga essential na uh, tools na magagamit natin using our OneNote. Sir Michael, ano pang masasabi mo dun sa shinare ni Ma'am Ruby Lynn? Very nice. Ayun, sir. Uh, very nice, sir. Uh, Actually, parang ano pa lang siya eh, parang ilang percent pa lang siya ng features ng OneNote. So, napakarami pa natin uh, pwedeng magamit sa OneNote. So, bitin na bitin. So, since limited lang yung time natin, ano yung pwede natin gawin? So, hindi naman pwedeng na magantay lang tayo ng mga training o ng mga webinar like this. So, merong magandang platform si Microsoft na at sa, sa gustong oras natin, pwede natin uh, makuha yung mga yung mga courses na yon na itinuro sa atin. So, ang gusto natin talaga yung mga courses like yung uh, sa flip rate kanina, kung nabitin kayo, kung nabitin kayo dun sa talk naman ni Mama Ron. So, one note, mayroong magandang platform na pwede tayong puntahan na anytime, anywhere, basta meron tayong internet, connect, internet connected tayo at meron tayong device, pwede tayong kumuha ng mga courses and then mag-apply sa mga so webinars na available. So, saan tayo pwedeng pumunta? So, mag-share ulit ako, sir. So, siyempre, ayaw naman natin ang one-time, big-time training. Gusto natin mag-continue yes, siya training natin para nadadagdagan at nadadagdagan. Especially, in terms of Microsoft, ang bilis na update ang Microsoft ang dami bago. So, saan tayo pwede pumunta? Share ko lang, shopping audio. Ayan. So, ayan. So, nakikita na po ba ang aking screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ayan. So, meron tayong tinatawag na Microsoft Educator Center. So, this is an educator community for educators around the world. So, lahat ng mga tools, Microsoft tools and partners ni Microsoft, ay dito natin makikita. So, paano tayo makakapasok dito? Of course, we need our Microsoft Live account or we need our the Microsoft Office 365 Deppet account. So, kung meron na yung existing, so pwede kayong makapag-start at makagawa ng account or kung wala pa kayong account ng Office 365, pwede naman nating gamitin yung libre na Microsoft Live account. So, wala lang kayo ng account card. So, Microsoft.com. Uh, and then, kapag nakagawa na kayo ng account sa Microsoft Live, in Microsoft Educator Center. And then, hihingan kayo ng account ng Microsoft. Again, you can use your 
Deped account, Microsoft Deped account, or your personal account. So this time, ang gagamitin ko ang aking Deped account, ncr2.deped.com. And then since, since uh, for work page yung ating Deped account, so hihingan tayo ng permission na makuha niya yung ibang information. And after that, meron na tayong account sa Microsoft Educator Center. So, ano mga makikita natin dito? So, sabi ko kanina, nandito yung halos lahat ng mga courses ng mga tools, Microsoft tools and productivity tools na itinuturo sa Microsoft Plus yung mga, yung mga partners sa industry nila like the Lego, the Minecraft, the Skype in the Classroom, STEM, Inclusive Education, etc. Nandiyan din yung tinuro natin kanina about sa Flipgrid and yung OneNote nila. So maraming resources tayong pwedeng makita rito. And isa sa mga ganda rito is that makikita natin yung development natin dito. So napakaraming programs ni Microsoft like the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program, etc. So since nag kayo ng dalawang training natin ngayon, so we want to recognize you to become a Microsoft Innovative Educator. So meron tayo hey. dito. Yan. So meron tayo dito yung promo code. Yan. So, once na makagawa kayo ng inyong account sa Microsoft Educator Center, so just key in this promo code, capital T-MMK-559-720. So, paano natin i-redeem yung code na yun? So, again, once na meron na kayong account, just click just click your uh, profile, yung may nakalagay siya na MM or your first name. And then click redeem achievement code. And then ikiki in mo yung code na ibinigay ko sa inyo. And then click redeem. And then automatically it will prompt up congratulations. And then automatic yung code na yun ay nagkakahalaga ng 2,500 points. Ibig sabihin, pag meron na kayong 2,500 points, kinikilala na kayo Microsoft bilang certified Microsoft Innovative Educator. Actually, 1,000 points lang by taking other courses na may points na 100, 500, 1,000. So for this training, meron tayong 2,500 points. So after redeeming that, you will recognize na kayo ni Microsoft bilang certified Microsoft Innovative Educator. O di ba? One step na yon para dun sa mga iba pang mga trainings natin. Now, paano ngayon natin mariredeem? Siyempre, budge yun. Kailangan natin ng certificate na talagang nare-recognize tayo. So, just click para makita natin yung view certificate. And then, that's it. Ito yung bagong itsura ngayon ng certificate na matatanggap nyo once na-redeem nyo yung promo code na ibinigay ko so, may katibayan niya na na-complete siya ng May 21, 2020 at this is signed by Anthony Salpino, the Vice President of Worldwide Education of Microsoft. Ayan. Again, yung ating promo code is this. Picture lang po natin. Ayan po. And of course, sa mga dun sa mga kanina hindi nakakapture ng ating... Uh, Kamustahan sa ating klase sa contemporary. This is our course of deep read. I think meron ng 215 educator na nakapat sign up. So balikan ko lang, mabilis lang. Balikan ko lang si si uh, deep read. Hindi natin nabang, nabanggit kanina. Ang maganda kay deep read is that makikita natin yung development natin as educator. It is a platform ako. So punta tayo dun sa profile natin. And then click achievements. Ayan. So, so makikita natin dito yung mga program na pwede nating salihan. Yung pag-i-create. So, automatic, once na create ka ng account, you will recognize as a community member. You can share that in your social media account, Facebook or other account. And then, may program din na tinatawag may student voice ambassador program. So, ito naman, Bilang ambassador, so your task is to propagate, to teach other uh, tutors na kung paano ginagamit itong, uh, kung paano ginagamit itong platform na to. So meron mga previous na binibigay si Sipik Print, kahit ang panig din ng DAB, makakarating yung mga, yung mga previous na yun, galing kay mismo kay Sipik Print. 
for example, you can have your voice card na kung saan pwedeng mag-record yung mga bata. Nagbibigay sila ng mga t-shirts, ng mga mugs, at different freebies na pwede natin mag -attend. And then, meron din tayo tinatawag na Flipgrid Certified Pitch Paper, Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. And then, yung development and progress natin dito sa Flipgrid, makikita natin yan kung ilan na ba yung mga nagagawa natin. So, ang challenge sa atin ngayon, paano natin may utilize yung gamit na so, hindi natatapos doon sa paggawalan ng isang build or pag-support natin na So, yan. Yes, thank you Sir Michael for sharing that the Microsoft Education community and na mention mo nga hindi na tapos sa ganitong session natin ating webinar you can uh, visit the site the uh, yung shin and uh, sir na education.microsoft.com and then may mga free na self paced na uh, learning materials na kung gusto mo pang explore you can earn badges and other than the badges ay mga certificates that yes. you can uh, use and then at the same time a bonus na lang yon di ba Ma'am Ruby Lynn? Yes po. Ma'am Ruby Lynn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so ayan. any advice ma'am or uh, sharing a uh, uh, advice para sa ating mga uh, educators na mag-explore sa Microsoft Educators Community or if they're interested na maging maya in the future po. Okay, sa lahat po po nakaguruan sa buong Pilipinas o kahit saan ka man ngayon, meron po tayong malaking chance to be part of being Microsoft Innovative Education Expert and you will start in Microsoft Education Center. So yung ibinigay po ni Sir Michael na code, that's a great entry to all of you to be part of the global educators. And uh, isa pa, uh, sa Pilipinas din, may program tayo na Microsoft Education Ambassador. And Ms. Insang, Ms. Clarissa Sigismondo, Ms. Grace Ko, and Sir... Joe Mardelion are there to guide us to uh, to have a full support to all of us. At sa lahat po, sa, uh, again, sa, lalo na sa nakakatanggap ng Office 365 na tool, we must be grateful po kasi license na po yung mga office natin. Di ba? Dapat gagamitin po natin yun. Para bang lahat tayo ay binigyan ng 24 hours. Meron bang nabubuhay na more than that? Di ba wala po? Lahat mm -hmm. po tayo binigyan ng 24 hours a day. But the question is, how do we utilize it? So parang ganun lang din yung, yung mga tools na binigay sa atin ng uh, EdTech. Binigyan nila sa atin to parang ano lang siya, introduction. But it's up to us teachers to explore, to learn more, and to mm -hmm. utilize it for the common good of our learners and to collaborate with each other for us to grow holistically because we teachers, we must have the growth mindset. All right, so let's keep our kids engaging. So I'm so grateful that uh, right now I started to have my online classes, virtual classes with my students. So that's it, kaya natin to. So whatever mode of teaching that is, uh, be utilized by all of us, kahit ano, basta nakakatulong sa ating mga bata po. Yun lang, positive yes. lang po tao. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Ma'am Ruthlin. Thank you, Ma'am Ruthlin. Yeah, sharing is caring talaga. Yes. Sir Michael, any last uh, advice sa ating mga educators for this new normal classroom? Ay, ayan, so napakarami nating mga tools na pwedeng gamitin sa classroom natin. Of course, always look back, ano ba yung needs ng student natin? Ano ba ang task right. na meron tayo? Kasi hindi natin pwedeng ipagamit lahat, di ba? So, depende pa rin right. yung needs. But of course, malaki yung may tutulong ng mga tools na yon to achieve yung goal natin sa level. Yeah. So, with that, I would like to share with you yung aking, yung aking video just to summarize ano ba yung ano ba yung pangarap ni Microsoft para sa mga estudyante. Mm -hmm. Ayan, so. Ayan. While sharing the video. How about you, Marie? Habang inantay natin yung video. Ayan, yes, ayan na. Yes, yes. Ayan na po. Ayan na, right. Ayan. 
Wala tang makabayan. Iniibig ko ang kitina. Aking lupang sinilangan. Tahanan ng aking lahi. Inukupok ko at tinutulungan. Maging malakas, masipag at marangal. Dahil mahal ko ang Pilipinas. Binigin ko ang payo ng aking magulang. Susubin ko ang tuntunin ng pangaralan. I'm Michael Morelia, Master Teacher 1 of Bahatan High School. I'm teaching Aralim Palipunan subjects like Philippine History, Asian History, World History, Economic, and Contemporary Indigenous. Currently, nakapag-train na ako ng almost 1,000 years concerning Microsoft productivity tools like Sway, OneNote, Office Tricks, in Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Ang challenge ngayon sa akin, paano ko ituturo sa bata yung mga natutunan ko sa Microsoft? Since ambassadors kami, innovator expert, lahat ng bago kay Microsoft, itinuturo sa mga ambassadors. And then we apply it sa classroom namin para makita namin yung mga dapat i-improve sa technology. Ang problem, ang mga bata, wala naman silang device, wala silang magagamit. Second, walang internet connection. So what we did na lang sa class namin, we have what we call a virtual classroom. We're in yung mga productivity tools na sinuturo, like the OneNote, the Sway, the Skype, etc. Nagbibigay ako ng task sa mga bata and they're basically at home. Kaya naman. As a student, nakuha lang ako ng Microsoft Sway mo sa mga kids. Kasi dito ko sa magawa ng presentation and report. Sway allows us to collaborate and work on the same presentation at the same time. Ginamit po namin yung OneNote namin at, at storing device po namin for our reports, sways, and presentations. Hindi na po kami gumagamit mga flash drives, or mga tiyas, and then na-release yun po namin sa mga 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 pag may internet access po anytime, anywhere. Yung mga bata, they were called themselves as millennial. So yung language nila is technology na. So since nasa digital world na sila, so kailangan matutunan din nila yung mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin ng isang digital citizen. Tinuturoan yung mga students to improve their computational thinking and critical thinking pag iisip bago mag-click or mag-post sa social media or sa internet. Yung digital citizenship, it is a norms on appropriate use of technology. Dito itinuturo ano yung mga dapat at hindi dapat gawin at kung paano natin mapoprotektahan mismo yung sarili natin. Kahit pa paano nakakatulong siya para maituwid yung value ng bata. Mahalagang ma-develop sa bata yung integrity kasi sila yung magmamana ng bansa natin. Ako po si Rob Andre R. Arnado na nangangarap na maging isang electrical engineer. Ako po si Colleen Michelle Mejia at ang pangarap ko po is maging psychologist. Ako po si Danica Prado. Pangarap ko po ay maging isang pediatrician. Tuto pa rin po ang mga tungkulin ng isang mamamayang makabayan. Naglilingkod, nag-aaral at nagdarasal ng buong katapatan. Iaaray po ang aking buhay, kamarap, pagsisikap sa bansang Pilipinas. Wow! Yan yung pang malakasang video ni, <laughs> ng ating uh, Sir Michael Morelia. Ang galing, galing. Congratulations, Sir Mike. So, again, maraming salamat po sa ating mga webinar uh, guest speakers, Dr. Rubilin Pastrana and Sir Michael Morelia. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Mabuhay po kayo. And uh, sana po mas marami pa kayong ma-inspire ng mga guro na mag gamit ang Microsoft platform at dahil meron tayong Office 365 ay i-utilize natin yung mga features na sayang hindi natin magamit. Right? Mamari? Si Mamari ay nag-stock up din. <laughs> Nangyayari talaga yan. So again, maraming salamat uh, guest speakers natin, Ma'am Rubilin, Sir Michael. Now let's have our uh, Educational Technology Unit Head, uh, siya ang of course ang ating uh, nag-iisang Sir Mark Anthony C.C. para magbigay ng kanyang closing remarks at uh, inspiration na rin para, para sa ating mga uh, educators.
sectors on how they're going to use these uh, platforms, the OneNote and the Flipgrid applications. Take it away, Sir Mark. Thank you, Sir Maj. Ayan. So to our participants ngayong araw, I know that there are some of you na, Ay, sir, wala po akong Office 365 account. Huwag po kayong mag-alala, ongoing naman po ang ginagawa ng DepEd para po ma-provide ang inyong mga account. At maibibigay po ito sa inyo soon. Okay, I will try my best also to extend our help with one of our divisions sa ICTS para po matugunan ang inyong pangangailangan para po magamit na ninyo ang Office 365 account. Okay? Being a teacher, uh, sa Lasal Green Hills before, share ko lang ulit ha, uh, this school actually became one of the first Microsoft Showcase School at very proud po ako na nung nandun po ako, isa po yun talaga sa masasabi kong napakagandang legacy na naiwan ko sa paaralan na yun. And when I joined DepEd, at tinanong po ako ni Miss Isang, ni Ma'am Grace, Mark, you're now with DepEd, so ano ba ang plano mo? Sabi ko talaga, my dream is to have a showcase school na manggagaling sa public school. At hindi po yun malayo na mangyari. Uunti-untiin po natin na ma ma maisarat to. para yun, kung tutusin, marami po tayong Microsoft Education Ambassadors na nagmula po sa public school. Now, all of our teachers there, kaya nyo ba yun? Ang sagot ko ay kaya nyo rin po yun. Kinakailangan lang magtiwala kayo sa inyong kakayanan na mangyayari po yun. It's just a matter of giving enough time and putting your passion onto it. No question, whatever subjects you are handling, what grade level you are teaching, as long as you are there willing to learn and willing to improve yourself. So, ano ang aking huli pang maibabahagi? Isa lang po. Kinakailangan habang tayo ay gumagal, gumagaling sa paggamit ng ganitong klase ng teknolohiya, we need to be very humble also. Dahil kinakailangan ibahagi natin ito sa iba. Tapos na yung panahon na kapag naipadala ka sa training, hindi mo isinishare dahil gusto mo ikaw lang ang, ang star, we need to end up. We need to end up. Kinakailangan kapag ito ay naituro sa inyo at meron kang nakitang guru na nagsastruggle, dapat willingly you share it. At yun ang advocacy na aming sinimulan sa Open Educational Resources and now that we are one big unit, the Educational Technology Unit, and soon will become a division, sana po ay kabahagi po namin kayo sa lahat ng prosesong ito at walang iwanan. Gaya ng aking nabanggit, I will do my best to lift up your EdTech skills dahil naniniwala ko na kaya po ninyo ito. So with that, huwag po kayo mag-alala, magkakaroon pa po tayo ng succeeding session with regards to Office 365 by June. At ito po ay gagawin po namin na step by step din po, kagaya ng inyo pong nakita. So with that, my dear colleagues, I enjoyed each one of you to love EdTech. Maliban po doon, maniwala po tayo sa promise ng DepEd that digital rise is really coming. Digital rise, PH. So... Maraming, maraming salamat po. Sir Maj? Alright, thank you very much, Sir Mark, for your uh, message para sa ating mga educators. Again, maraming po, pa po tayong uh, uh, webinars and mga Microsoft applications and at iba pang platforms na may explore uh, na ituturo sa atin ng ating EdTech unit. So again, Ma'am Marie? Andiyan si Ma'am Marie? Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am Marie, yung iyo po yata yung speaker. Medyo mute po ata si Ma'am Marie. Ma'am Marie, speaker. <laughs> Parang hindi yata. Ma'am Marie. Ayan, nangyayari talaga yan. Nangyayari talaga yan, Sir Mark. Yes. Anyway. So, <laughs> ayan ang ating nabanggit, Sir Maj. Na, okay, so... Uh, Yes, yung ating yes. nabanggit na yung kanilang queries po regarding sa kanilang Office 365 account, tayo po ay makikipagtulungan. Dahil uh, ito po ay galing po sa CO. So kung ang inyong pong division ITO ay nakapagpasa na, nakapag, napunta na po sa regional office, sa rito, at naipasa na rin po sa central office, now we will try our best para ma-deploy po ito. Dahil ayaw natin na may gurong mapag-iiwanan. Ay, sino to? <laughs> sino yan? Nagulat Michael ako. Jackson. Michael Jackson. 
Ikaw <laughs> besa, Raden. Yan. Alright, so again, uh, to our fellow educators, maraming salamat muli sa pagtutok sa ating webinar about Flipgrid and OneNote. And we hope na magamit po ninyo ito sa inyong uh, uh, new classroom and uh, new normal classroom. And of course, uh, with the Microsoft Educators na uh, website na mentioned kanina that you can enroll yourself to different courses and different uh, uh, applications na gusto niyong matutunan and professional learning development na uh, groups na, na mentioned ni Sir Michael Morelia. And by the way, may pahabol si Ma'am Clarissa and uh, it's, uh, awareness lang po that all teachers have access to Office 365 and Teams. Ang susunod po ay ang mga learners natin. Magkakaroon sila ng kanilang Microsoft uh, Office account. Next, ang Teams Live can accommodate up to 10,000 attendees. So 10,000 ang ating Teams Live and ang ating Teams wow. meeting na application can hold up to 250 na 250 na participants. All right. So with that, uh, marami marami salamat po muli. Yes, sir? Uh, I-remind lang natin paano ang kanilang output, saan po nila ilalagay. Ayan. So, thank you, sir, Mark, for reminding. Yes, thank you, sir, Mark. Nakapost na po sa ating yeah. ed ed tech unit na page ang uh, how to post your comments. And sa baba din, nakikita ninyo ang link yes, to our attendance. Ma'am Marie. Yeah. Ayan. Yes, yeah, so. uh, attendance po natin, HCTPS, uh, colon, so, slash, tinyurl.com, flipgrid, one note, et two. So, yan po. Paki, Ayan. eto po, ay nasa ilalim po. Ayan. At hanggang anong, hanggang anong oras lang, Ma'am Marie? Sir Ar Ariel, hanggang anong oras lang? 1 p.m. Yeah, wow, until 1 p.m. Oh lang po. So wala tayong masyadong mabigat na output, selfie or screenshot or kung nakapag-share ka na sa Flipgrid, okay na yon as output. Alright? So, Thank you very Sir much, Ariel. Philippines. Ayan. Hmm. Ayan. Ayan. Mabother ako kay Sir Ariel, si Michael Jackson na buhay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't you like it? Any message? Message, Michael Jackson? <laughs> Um, thank you very much, EdTech Unit. Thank you very much to all the teachers in the Philippines. Uh, we hope that you share what you have um, learned today and for the rest of the months, for the rest of um, before we go to school, before we have the face-to-face, -face, I think uh, we will be equipped and I think we're ready for the new normal. <laughs> for the rest Sorry, of your life. For lang po, uh... So I'm not leaving anymore. Yes, <laughs> from uh, SDO Santiago City, EPS po siya ng MAPE. Hi, Sir Benedict Santiago. Ayan, shout out po sa kanya. Hello, Sir Benedict. Siya yung nag-asikasa sa din pag may OER training sa Santiago hello, City. Sa Santiago. At syempre kay Sir Asa. Ricardo Cabugao. Hello. Hi, Sir Ricardo. Shout out lang po. Shout out po sa mga tagahindang kabite. Sa principal ko, Ma'am Pilinda Cruz. Shout out din po sa mga taga San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Sa division ng San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Yes. Yan, syempre sa aming eskwelahan sa, mga... sa Marangal National High School na nagre-reading po ngayon. <laughs> At yeah, reading po sir for pama sa mga uh, kabatchmate ko sa pamantasan ng lungsod ng Maynila. At yung mga uh, eduk students diyan at yung mga graduate, oh, di ba? Now uh, we are already delivering what we have learned do sa ating inang pamantasan, di ba? Ayan. Yes, thank you, Sir Jimmy Romero. <laughs> Ayan. So again, shout, shout out, out din po sa lahat National ng Teacher mga... Challenge. Ayan. <laughs> shout out sa lahat <laughs> ng ating mga educators sa uh, Tipolo City Senior High School, mga Tipolo City uh, teachers, uh, Marikina High School, sa Telena High School, yung mga former teachers ko dyan, shout out po sa inyo. At sa lahat ng mga guro buong Pilipinas, buong mundo, maraming maraming salamat sa pagtangkilik, sa pag uh, so bye bye pag panunood ng at mga recorded at mga live videos ng Educational Technology Unit. Sobrang mahal na mahal namin kayo. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you. Shout out Ayan. Bankan Elementary School. And also, Hello sir, you. shout out ko na rin and congratulations to 
Sir Badge yes. Manansala na may training ngayon sa Samar National High yes. School. Ongoing. Yan. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Ayan. Say hello to our elementary, elementary schools. And we have 10 seconds. Sa mga mingyas. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Bye, Ooh. Inga. Take care. Happy lunch. Happy lunch. Thank you. Happy lunch to all. God bless.